dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end in time previously on missed opportunities the party finished their business in salt marsh and began the long long voyage towards the city port alucine the capital of the land of dementlieu they knew only a few scattered details about the nature of this decadent city but one detail stood all important a founding member of the thalassic league resides in the city they will need to find this cultist and the obsidian obelisk that they possess in order to undo the dark curse which has been placed upon their new home of Saltmarsh. The journey was bumpy, to say the least, as midway through their travels they encountered a trio of storm giants who seemed to be interfering with the weather, and a massive ocean-bound storm was gathering strength all around them. Thankfully, they were able to discern the friendly nature of these giants without disrupting the ritual to a fatal degree. Oops. Only somewhat disrupting it, the ship took some damage, but the officers and the crew of Pixie's Fury held fast and managed to weather the storm with only mild to moderate damage to the ship. A few days later, they arrived in Port Alucine, the beautiful city where they were greeted uh, before docking by the Admiral of the Dementlieu's Navy a seemingly uh, satisfied with their courtesy, he invited them into the city port, declaring them and labeling them as allied emissaries from the city of Saltmarsh. Upon disembarking, they sampled a couple foods and saw just the strange nature of this city on full display. Wealth, in absolute abundance displayed in people's dresses, in the way that people dressed, and the masks that everyone seemed to wear as if the city was in, in a or par perpetual masquerade. Just a few minutes after arrival as well, a black stagecoach arrived, and a hunched over leathery skinned old man wearing a mask hobbled over to them, passing out invitations to a masquerade in two days' time at the um, Chateau Donaire, or rather the um, manor of Cedra Donaire, one of the leading members of Dementlieu's aristocracy. This is a coveted invitation, as was evidenced by only two of a trio of women standing nearby receiving invitations. And when one of them did not receive this invitation. Her reaction gave the party more of a sense that she was afraid for her life rather than just afraid for her social station. And that is where we left off. So my friends, we return to the city of Port Alucine, where it is early in the day and um, you see a two women um, comforting one of their friends near the docks. You see vendors going by, all dressed in finery, advertising um, foods, wines, masks, jewelry, all bits of finery um, to anyone willing to listen. 
Sarayan. Fury, what do you do? All right. Oh, no, uh, go ahead, Liz. Sarayan, um, she's standing there almost unaware, um, just peripherally aware that this whole scene with the women has happened um, as she stands there in her version of ball attire, having just uh, felt excoriated <laughs> by the people <laughs> who saw her and she felt like she felt beautiful. Um, and so being an awkward teenager, she's deeply blushing a deeper coral and she immediately rushes over to one of the vendors and secures a mask that she places over her face. <laughs> Okay. Um, they uh, will charge you. Uh, they will ask five gold pieces for the mask. It is expensive. Um, Money's not You see it is, it is not feathered. <laughs> and as you look at it, um, there's a little bit of... Um, um, almost like it's dusty. It's been in a museum, at least on the back mm -hmm. end of it. The, mat, the, the end that would sit against your face is kind of covered in this weird fine gray dust and um you can also see that some of it is just barely beginning to tarnish but you think eh, it, it might do <clears throat> sarayan begins to look the mask um over in her hands and is kind of turning it noticing it's uh it's imperfections yeah um, is there I'm, I'm really sorry if this is rude. Is there anything, um, n newer? Newer? Well, is it the custom oh. to wear old masks? You mean like the one that I am wearing? That mask is no more than a month old. Uh, unfortunately, well, it's the best one that I have at the moment. It should suit you fine. It will look beautiful with a few adjustments. What adjustments? <laughs> well, I mean, it is a little bit old fashioned. It's a bit passe, wouldn't you say? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Serena has Some no feathers, idea. <laughs> a new uh, gilded finish. It will suit you much better. Uh, it, it will suit you very well. Oh, thank you. Um, Where can I buy some feathers? <laughs> Well, uh, they are difficult commodities at the moment. Okay. I'm afraid I cannot help you there. Enjoy the mask. And you, you see too. him. <clears throat> and you see this man kind of start to zip away um, very quickly after selling you the mask. Um, Sarayan immediately begins scanning for feathers that have fallen off birds that she can affix to her mask. Oh dear. That's a good question. Um, DM, can I just do a scan around to see if I see any birds? <laughs> um, yeah, there are make, birds a, in the picture. make a perception check. I see birds. Uh, I'm going to do a roll on my crack and die for this one, my friends. I'm going to go ahead and roll my good old blue cat's eye die here. I have rolled uh, the Kraken butt. Take feathers, we can take uh, feathers butt. from the seagull. <laughs> from uh, I have rolled the Kraken butt, which is a one. So that is a total of one. As long as he doesn't Swear you can hear gulls somewhere, but that's. <laughs> um, do you have um, <laughs> wild? You, I, I have this image. I'm sorry. I have this image of no, like no, no, you're you're a seagull coming down and landing on your shoulder, and everybody like the entire. The entire uh, everybody's really? just stopping and just slowly turning to look at the goal. Yeah, Saran's like trying to sneakily <laughs> approach the bird. Oh my god, that you is pull off ever and it takes one damage. No, oh, is it gonna get a die? <laughs> it takes one damage. How much health does um, it have? I think they all have one hit point, didn't they? Yeah, it's got one. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, I would never. <laughs> I think they do. You see the uh, Jade, your familiar, quickly flies yeah, up point. to one of the uh, arms on the, uh, or one of the, um, uh, one of the spars on the ship, like way up onto one of the uh, parts of the mast. <laughs> um, while Sirayan goes on her um, mask shopping hunt, um, I would like to 
um, kind of walk over towards this trio of ladies that is sort of having their little moment. Um, I'd like to send Doll over there as well. I'm going to follow. Okay. Um, and and kind of coming coming up, not, not, you know, like making a hard beeline for them, but sort of gently making my way over toward them and um, coming up and sort of gently making my presence known. Um, I'm sorry to disturb you. Um, pardon me. I'm, well, obviously, uh, new to the area. Um, I couldn't help but notice your distress. Is everything okay? Uh, obviously. I, I spent on this... Uh, she's kind of indicating her mask, and I wasn't in the... I, 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 uh, I'm ruined. I, I, I won't be able to... Uh. And she's just kind of completely caught in her sobs, and one of them kind of... Um, oh, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Brings her in and taps her on the back, and then one kind of steps forward and says, Just what is it you're trying to do? Are you some kind of... Uh, well, she kind of looks you up and down in a very judgmental fashion. You are some kind of sailor. You I, must have been I, at sea I, a long time, huh? We literally just disembarked. Um, and I'll be honest, I'm kind of trying to get my bearings a little bit, my friends and I. The kind of ge gesture sort of over towards the group of people. Um, although we did receive an invitation, um, I think a practical question is if we wanted to make sure that we were adequately dressed, where might one go? <laughs> well, it's going to take quite an improvement, I see, so. <sighs> yada, yada, yada. It is, uh. Pretty late in the week. Usually, most of the shops or the anyone who is anyone has already arranged for their own garb and masks, perfumes, and whatnot. You might, uh, well, you might be able to find ugh, something at the uh, well. I've heard the way at the end of the town, down the, what is it called? Way down the Widow's Walk, there is a, a street near the woods. There's some crafty people there who might be able to fashion you something. I've heard they've done good work in the past. Personally, I would never be caught dead on that side of town, but you might try it. Well. I suppose when one is desperate, one must stoop to such low measures. Indeed. But it seems maybe not so low of a stoop for you, yes? Hmm. I watch my step where I go. Oh, you should. Especially there. Hmm. <laughs> Very good. Um, Nether speaks from a few uh, <laughs> feet distant, you know, kind of looking the other way. And uh, then she turns back and says, Well, we are highborn enough to be honored guests of the ruler of this town. I am, excuse me, madam, but... Uh... So you know it is not uh, considered proper in this town to um, introduce yourselves first with your servants as such as these. Um, I would uh, present yourself first and have your servants follow. It is the way of this place. Um, I, I plaster a very, very rigid smile on my face as she says that. And she, knowing that... Uh, I did not realize, I'm sorry. Knowing that she is your attendant, she will not need so fancy a, so fancy a um, outfit for the, for the ball, but uh, still something more, uh, well, 
palatable than this. And uh, I do think that the ones at uh, the end of the uh, widow's walk will be quite apt in making her presentable. It should be fine. We have many questions here as uh, there seem to be a few customs here that we're not familiar with. I mean, I understand the disappointment of not being able to come to a party, but curious as to the economics and the possible penalties one might face for not being invited to the party. Oh, this is not talk for the streets. This is... We should not talk about these things here. That is uncouth. And... Uh, Everyone must be polite. Exceedingly so. Why would you not be? It is such a better way to be. Don't you agree? Yes. Incredibly polite. Hmm. Now, if the gentlewoman does not require anything else, I should be on my way. I wonder if you could... No, she, she does walk over and looks at the woman who seems to be distraught. I wonder if... I could perhaps speak with you for a moment. She kind of... <laughs> yes, milady. And she kind of takes a handkerchief and blots around her tears, kind of going under her mask. And you can see she's kind of wiping away the cheeks where what seems to be um, maybe just a little bit of makeup or um, actually maybe um, a little bit of dust has kind of accumulated underneath and is run down and kind of cleans herself off a bit <laughs> stands up straight and gives you a small curtsy I um, I would be very grateful if you could uh, tend me at a luncheon I am having Very courteous invitation, miss. Um, uh, you, you realize that I have not been given this most recent invitation, yes? Yes, I have, uh, but perhaps that can be changed. You, I, I would be most honored to attend My, uh, my servants will see to the details. Very good. I raise uh, a tall eyebrow at that. Melvin will step forward, with book in May hand. May I have the pleasure of knowing the madam's name? Uh, my name is uh, Lady Debri Shelmorn. Lady Debri, it is my deep honor. I will, will uh, anxiously await the details. <clears throat> and uh, she nods awkwardly, turns away, and as she does, Dahl begins to whisper in your ear, Mariah, we need information, right? She seems to be in a position to be particularly friendly, given the proper motivation. Muted. Don't hear you. I just kind of shrug at you, and I will walk away. Um, really sorry. use your help here. Seems you got stay, it all on your own. Doll, so, so, doll stays with you. I don't know what I'm doing. No, oh, they like you. They like an illusion. Like they like an illusion, Mariah. Uh, Melvin will step forward and uh, ask, uh, may I have your name for, for the lady's records? Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, I am Emmanuel Lenotre. Uh, and, and where might we call upon you? 
you may, um, the lady can call upon me at my home, um, well, my parents' home of, excuse me, I'm pulling up the street name, mm-hmm. which I forgot. Uh, it is on, uh, it is on the Starlight Boulevard, the corner near the Crucible building. Oh, okay. Um, we we will uh, send particulars for the, the luncheon as soon as they are available. I am honored. And uh, she turns and kind of looking between her... Uh, um, friends as they all kind of scurry off down the street. Moraine, <clears throat> by this point, has made a full circle of the... I, well, I was going to say a circle of the square, but she's got around the perimeter of the square um, looking kind of towards uh, bereft people and asking if they didn't get an invitation and whether or not they're going to need their mask because <laughs> she's trying to upgrade hers. <laughs> so she hasn't, I'm guessing, had any takers so far. So as she sees this group of women walk away, she starts to kind of run after them. Wait, wait, one, I'm sorry, excuse me. They all kind of turn and again, they're confused by the way that you look, but it's clearly <laughs> nice, but it's v- so different from anything they've ever seen. You can see that there's a bewilderment and um, they clearly just don't know how to um, uh, how to reconcile with your appearance and then and therefore know how to act. So they just kind of uh-huh. how, DM, how old are these women? You very young adults. Okay, so a little bit older than Sarayan, probably. Yes. Okay, yep. so she intuits whether or not this is accurate. Some sort of, um, they're the upper echelon of the, like, popular kids. <laughs> they're popular kids, <laughs> and she is an unpopular kid. And she's used to this dynamic enough that she recognizes it. And so she walks up, and she curtsies clumsily. <clears throat> I'm, so- I'm sorry, um... It seems like like you all know how to how to dress for for this ball, um, and I I'm very sorry. It looks like you didn't get an invitation, and I know what that's like to not be invited to things, and I know it's it's tough. But I'm rambling. Um, is there anything that I I I could do to fit in a little bit more around here? Ah. Uh. Well, um, uh, you. I think you all look very nice, by the way. Oh, make a persuasion check, Sir Ann. <laughs> <laughs> I'll roll my bada da 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 crack and dice. All right. Persuasion. Be believe. No way. I rolled a two. Uh, plus five, which is seven. (laughs) The, um, one that kind of, the, um, tears kind of, uh, had been coming before the one who was crying kind of looked up. And as if grasping for some way to assert some sort of power when left powerless looks at you and says... I would start with a mirror. <gasps> and then kind of turns around and keeps walking. You don't look that nice anyway. I can see why you weren't invited. <laughs> you can see fists oh. clench and shoulders rise in tension. Are you wearing any sort of... um? Uh, are you just wearing your dress? Are you wearing any of your armaments, armaments or anything at this moment? <laughs> Definitely the boots. Yeah, she's wearing a plate <laughs> <the> mail <laughs> helmet. It's 
<laughs> got a dress on and a plate mount helmet. <laughs> she's got her boots and she's probably got it's the, the, the weirdest Cinderella ever. You run down the steps and you leave yeah, this she... giant armored boot instead of the glass slipper. She definitely has her giant armored boots on, but she also has um, wave strapped to her back and like another, uh, I guess her long sword also strapped to her back, kind of okay. like cross style. <laughs> Um, is the one will say, don't make me call the god. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm royalty, so I think I could figure a way out of it. And <laughs> she turns on a heel and walks away. <laughs> um, GM, while I was talking to, um, Emmanuel, um, yeah. I wanted to take a a look at the dust that you said was gathering under her mask that she was wiping away. Does that seem mm -hmm. like the uh, catalyst, the uncatalyzed uh, liar's dust Make that we found perception. on the other map? Make a perception check. That's going to be a bit yeah. of a hard one because you can't sure. actually reach out and investigate it. On the crack and die. Oh, okay. I've rolled a five um, plus <laughs> seven. One, two and a five so no. far. Plus four for perception yeah, is nine. Good. So I don't think I succeed. It's hard to tell. You know, yep. you might have noticed that Saran, I, I don't know if Saran would have told you, but her mask was a little dusty as well, as was the one oh, that you guys, I would were, not have you told guys him found anything. in the um, Emperor of the <laughs> Waves, the first right. day you discovered right. the Thalassic League. That was your clue. Which I currently place. have. Just... Well, and that, that dust was what got used to create the liar's dust originally. Mm. Mm -hmm. The dust off of the original mask. Right why I was wondering. Hmm. Well, Melvin could come talk to Sarayan if he's not scared. <laughs> well, what are Buff. we doing then? Are we... We need to find out what's going on here. There's there's clearly odd customs. And this... I mean, I understand finery and all that, but the fact that they're so obsessed with it seems unhealthy. I don't think they understand finery, if it's any consolation. Well, it's all subjective to a certain degree, right? I certainly don't know anything about it. I just copied what I saw a bunch of them wearing and put it all together. The finery itself may be subjective, but the obsession with it is universal. And I say that with an intense amount of distaste. I'm more worried the fact that they said they're going to die. That was what I was worried about as well. Someone said they're gonna die. Yeah, that lady said that. Oh, she didn't get an invitation, so it might kill her. I think there's some sort of. I'm not having trouble putting my finger on it. There's oh. some sort of threat. I wonder what it might be. Maybe we can find someone who knows more. Mm hmm. Do you think it's worth um, pursuing this idea of a luncheon with this Emmeline? Or should we? Uh, that was Emmanuel. 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 Sorry, I, I know an Emmeline. Emmeline um, is different. <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, um, yeah. DM, uh, would I be able to make use of my researcher background feature to determine where I might need to go to find more information about this mysterious it that might be killing people who are not invited? Hmm. Interesting. Um, I believe sort of that background feature indicates that um, even if you don't know the information, you know where it's likely to be found. Correct. Yes. <clears throat> hmm. Um, make a um, make a uh, just general um, actually make a history check. History roll. Are you are you proficient in history? I am, in fact. Yes. Cool. Um, I've rolled nerd. a sixteen on the crack and die. Plus seven is, and yes, Melvin is a nerd. Uh, sixteen plus seven is a uh, twenty-five. I think. Math is hard. Okay. Yeah. So, do you remember a particular instance in Waterdeep um, spending? <laughs> Two or three, two or three days, 
your nose and scrolls, asking a couple um, researchers to help you find certain documents. You poured over them. You had to employ a translator at one point to translate some. You were looking for um, a information about a um, particular thing that you saw around Waterdeep. Some people putting certain symbols and a certain arrangement of flowers over the top of their door sills. And you just couldn't find almost anything about it. And then you remembered, and then at one point you, you almost were ready to give up and a friend of, took you down to a local um, uh, pub. Sitting there in this tavern um, probably not drinking an ale. I see Melvin still doesn't really understand <laughs> all of that, but you overheard some travelers loudly boasting, well, what's with the flowers and stuff above the doors? What's going on? And it became this sort of joke that had come, you know, that had sort of echoed around the tavern. And eventually, between the barkeep, a couple of the locals who came in, um, it was explained to you their sort of religious purpose to a very small subsect of one of the temples in Waterdeep. And what I'm saying is, as far as codified things, um, current culture is less likely to be documented as it is the norm in which current researchers are writing. If you find a place where other foreigners gather, other people who are unfamiliar, that is probably the place where you're going to get more um, interesting and accurate info on the very basics of navigating the culture and um, the complicated social norms in this place. So anyway, that was a really roundabout way of saying that, but that I imagine that's the way that Melvin thought. Um, the less very obvious, but not very obvious um, based on your background and your method of understanding the world. We need to find a youth hostel, is what you're saying. Uh, or or a, or a tavern on the docks. That would work, too. Anywhere An expat the, tavern. Anywhere where there's lots of lots of foreign sailors. That would, that would work. We're looking for a sports bar. Yeah, we're looking uh, for that, a sports bar in Prague. Sure. That'll hey, work. there you go. <laughs> Ready, let's go. <laughs> Um, Gary Lineker's yeah. bar in Tenerife that's been there since that, I was 18 that, and went back 20 years later. That might be a, a more efficient way to get information than trying to wine and dine this young lady, Emmanuel. Well, how about we let Nether wine and dine Emmanuel and those of us who are low class can go find the tavern. Oh, come on. Nether, I could, I could help. You know this is just an illusion. I'm the lowest of all of you. Well, I don't take an issue with what you've put on. I just find this environment incredibly uncomfortable. So, so do I. But that doesn't... Unless we just get back on the ship and leave. Well, I'm not saying We that. can't do that. So. Serene, uh, We're not doing that. Serene could help. <laughs> Are you... Um, I Saran. don't think we sh I don't think we should separate and I'm perfectly willing to let go whatever that was if you think it's a bad idea captain no I don't think it's a bad idea nether fine then Serene, I would be very grateful for your help since really? I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing I don't know okay. anything about a lunch and I barely know what the word means I think you know what the word means it's pretty intuitive do you have a is it? Do you have lunch lunch on something? A table. And it's plates. A normal lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but fancy. It, yeah, it's a fancier lunch. No one asked you. Yes. No okay. Okay, it's like lunch, but you keep your pinky out the whole time. That's true. How would you pinky know that? lunch? You don't know like everything about me. But, like, I don't, really don't, I don't know anything idea about to split you. Up, though. I, as that conversation has happened, I am already wandering. <laughs> like, by the Serena time another says that, I'm like five Serena yards away. Serena and I are deep in conversation exactly. about what we may Serena's or may not know. Fully immersed. 
the first time that Talise has are been we, nice to Are her. we splitting up then? Is that the plan? I don't recommend it. I don't think it's a good idea. So, are we all going to the luncheon then? Well, also, it, where are we going to have it, appear, it appears that one of us definitely is not. And if that's the Where's case, the then venue? I guess none of us are because we shouldn't well, split up in fair. a strange this place. Well, that's not fair. This is a democracy. We talked about this. She's You're a princess. Just... What do you mean it's a democracy? I meant outside of like where I live. Right. But this is a democracy, remember? Because we all nominated Mariah. She's now, she's now halfway down the street. Why should she we'll get go. to decide for everybody what we do? I don't think that's Because she's the captain and we're not deciding for, for everyone. Have a good day. Thank Bye, you. Captain. Um, where's the venue for the uh, the luncheon going to be? It's not happening. We're not split, we're not separating in a strange place. I'm gonna okay. follow Mariah before well. she's lost. So if, I... if nothing else, we can we can figure out where to hold the luncheon by going to the tavern and talking yeah, to some have of the, the luncheon foreigners. In a, in a tavern on the docks. There we go. Well, I, I more meant we could get some information about where to hold it. Um, we can turn the tavern into lunch planning. DM, um, as I'm making my way deeper into the city, um, I'm just trying to kind of take everything in. I'm curious about what kinds of things are being talked about by the people that I pass by. What's the the lilt of the language, even if they are speaking common, you know, what kind of vocabulary are they using? Things like that. I'm kind of just absorbing. Okay. You do have a minute or two before your, um, you hear kind of the discussion of your friends fades a bit behind you. And then um, you have a few moments as you're walking before they catch up. Um, you hear the conversation begin to grow louder again and they fierce clanking of metal boots on cobblestone coming from Sarayan and probably definitely uh, impetuous at this point <laughs> and in that in those few minutes uh, make a perception check okay got a Bradley I could help oh, full plate. why don't why don't you and I go and talk uh, to 17 I think it'd be dangerous 17. I don't trust these people. You, I... sorry. Okay. Uh, can we? Uh, can I describe Mariah's thing and then we pick Absolutely, that up? Absolutely, please so, go. Please. Um, as you are walking and looking around, you see um, some interesting interactions in that certain people walking. You notice a sort of double take that they do with these masks. It's not. Uh, immediately obvious when people make eye contact so they, they kind of look at one another and when they do it's almost like they become locked in some sort of um, social contract where a few pleasantries have to be exchanged short words empty questions empty answers and then they go on their way 17 you also notice that some people um, alone, for instance, you see um, someone who looks to be quite middle class. Um, they're dressed still nicely, but not extravagantly. Um, their clothes look fine, and they are gathering what look to be um, maybe laundry items from a very nice row house here. Um, and they take them out and you see for a moment they can um, barely lift the basket for a second and they set it down, their figure hunched and you can see this man just kind of wringing his hands, um, bony fingers, maybe arthritic, maybe malnourished and just as his cuffs roll up for a moment, the wrists and the arm beneath it are just skin and bone thin. And um, he then pulls his fairly nice clothing back in as he notices more people coming and assumes a posture. And then he hears a voice from across the street calling and asking how he is. And 
he replies in a brief pleasantry saying that well business is no business is great he'll have half of the street um all use utilizing his company before the day is out um it's up and up for him um you know business is so much we can barely keep up with it and then he can barely hide his pain as he grabs the basket of laundry and walks down the street um seeming see, you get this weird sense that you just saw someone who cleans bed linens for quote unquote rich people who seems to claims to own a large company and service the richest of the rich and do the best but you saw a beneath these upper middle class clothes someone who is likely starving um, that takes you out of it for a moment as you watch that scene pass. A few more things like this. A baker holding out little treats of baked bread. No one really uh, no one really taking any heed to them, but nonetheless they have this big baker's hat that you would imagine if it were Waterdeep or even Baldur's Gate, this person dresses as if they were servicing one of the finest inns with um, sweet pastries, like a true pastry chef. But this person is just little baked morsels on the street, but nonetheless dressed like a high-class pastry chef. It's very strange. Um, uh, and the costume of it and the brief pleasantries that most people exchange, especially here. And about that time, you guys are approaching where, as you're walking, uh, the very rich area is beginning to give way to, I guess, a um, what you would think is strongly upper middle class, probably. Nice houses as well, just not quite as adorned. And the people are also proud, but you see more, uh, you see a forge, you see a bakery, you see a cobbler, you see a Fletcher, all of these types of things. And that's about the time your party catches up with you. But no one seems down on their luck. Everyone seems very successful, at least at the front. Um, and everyone's speaking common? Yes. Okay. Is mostly human too. Very, very, almost overwhelmingly human. Um, mm -hmm. A few halflings you see running around. You haven't seen any dwarves. Uh, no elves, but you see a few half elves. Yeah. Um, one last thing that I'm specifically curious about. Um, is there any uh, hint or sound of music anywhere? Um, Have you checked the hills? I did not check the hills yet. I might need to go farther outside of town for that. There is, you do hear uh, what see what seems to be a larger eating house slash tavern down the way, and you hear a soft uh, music coming from there, um, but not much, less than you would expect in a city of this size. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, just for all intents and purposes, sorry. that's the direction that I am heading as the party catches up to me. So, What's up? A quick thank you to Fabled42 for the raid, as well as Sky McSparkle for the raid as well. Welcome, guys. What's up, raiders? Yeah, Hello, fanblers and by, sparklers. We're sponsored by Kraken42, so if you stick around, earn some gold and enter the giveaways. What did I say? <laughs> you said Kraken42. Oh, did I? Crack a dice. Sorry, guys. Where, where did I get 42 <laughs> from? Oh, Fable42. Fable42. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're sponsored by Kraken Dice, guys. So if you stick around, earn some gold, and you can enter the giveaway, and we'll be drawing it at the end of the game. It's for $25. So thank you and welcome. I'm going to go back in my home now. Yeah. Oh, how picturesque. So Indeed. Um, uh, DM, as we're walking through the city, I'm keeping my eye out for any signs of dust. Okay. Um, so... Uh, make a, make a perception check again. And that's much better. Uh, a natural 17 on the die plus four is going to be 21. You'll see maybe about... Um, <clears throat> 15 to 20% of the people you see um, have a embroidered handkerchief and occasionally from their mask, just kind of where it ends, a 
occasionally you see them dabbing the end from sweat, uh, where just a bit of sort of dusty grime seems to be rolling down and they kind of wipe it away. Continue on. It's the only sign you see of that. Okay. And at this point, the party catches up to Mariah, who's kind of, um, her attention seems to be diverted towards a, uh, what you can only assume is a tavern. Rain follows very begrudgingly. Uh, that the place then? I hear a bit For of music. a luncheon? It's at least better than nothing. Oh, oh no, no, if think, you want to have a we're... fancy lunch and you probably want to rent something that's nicer than this. I agree. Well, I don't think we want to have that. that luncheon if it means that we're all going to have to be separated. We we should back each other up. Yeah, put the luncheon on the back burner. And like we need to get our bearings and figure out some other stuff before we attack the city. Okay, well, I just have to say that it's pretty rude to extend an invitation and get somebody's information and then not talk to them ever again. Huh. If that's the only rude thing we do while we're here, I should think it we're lucky. Well, you just asked me to teach you how to be a member of Oh, that's society. a good point. And... All right, well, that's a lesson learned, but I could still choose to be rude, right? It's not off the table, guys, all right? We, we might find more information at this place we're going to that will lead us to want to have the luncheon anyways. You never know. I'm starting to hate the idea of the luncheon, actually. The rain is disappointed, deflated, feeling like the one in she has had with somebody socially is... <laughs> 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 Also, uh, Nether finds a place perhaps where no one is looking and, and changes their, the uh, illusion on her back to uh, what she was wearing before. Okay. Uh, so wh that's common? Um, yeah, just what she was wearing on the ship. Um, her, her net and um, the uh, mm -hmm. clothes that she was wearing before. Okay. And are you entering this uh, uh, tavern? Yep. Okay, cool. So uh, entering this place, you see um, a tall building, warm inside, um, a considerably well-stocked bar, um, a few patrons. It's not quite what it looks like in this image. There aren't people laying over the tables necessarily, <laughs> but moderately <laughs> dressed middle-class people kind of um, sit about and you do see a bard in the corner who is dressed in full, um, uh, what is the word? Sort of Harlequin jester attire, complete with the full mask and everything and the little jingly bells who's singing and uh, playing a song as, um, as you walk by, uh, softly singing something um, pleasant, and yeah, that's the, about the only sound. There's some casual, quiet conversation, okay. and um, the uh, uh, um, bar, uh, the 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 barkeep kind of looks up and says, "Ah, will you be dining with us today?" Uh, at the very least, getting a drink. I uh, would love to know what you've got on tap and or what's best in your house. Um, well, drinks we have. Um, my goodness, I could go <laughs> on and on about the lists of the uh, beers we have and the, the uh, cellar of wine is, well, beyond counting these days really but uh, the, the uh, uh, I do have one the, the freshest beer is at the ready right here and well the bottle of wine that is about the perfect age happens to be right behind me right now the most uh, pretty much the best is the most convenient at the moment so those are what I'd recommend then whatever suits your fancy in this particular good moment. ale and wine then 
Uh, y'all, y'all drinking? I look around at the group. Uh, I'll have one. I'm going to throw my uh, trident up to the, up at the guy in the rafter zone. Boink. Nether shakes her hand. Doesn't want any. Okay. Um, and uh, he kind of then goes past. He asks what everyone wants. Um, uh, and then you, actually do looks. Do you have anything def- stronger than ale? Actually. I believe I have a spirit or two. Apologies. And he kind of looks deferentially towards Saran. I and he looks towards you, Saran, and says, "I early in the day I thought perhaps it wasn't the best. Spirits are okay," he says, looking at Saran. Uh, uh, um, Saran has been absorbed in thought. Um, spirits, what? What? Is that okay to kind of gesturing towards Melvin to serve spirits? To to him? Oh, mm-hmm. sweet gods above. Oh, well, I... well, I'm not the boss of him. Um, uh, I'm confused, but uh, I, spirits it is then. Um, I have a, uh, a. I've been told a lot I'm not the captain. So. Oh, I think I understand. That's, that's the other one. The We're from one Salt March. Yeah. Well. Welcome to Port Alucine, then. Um, you've come to the right place, right? I have a fine elven brandy that I'll bring out as well. Very good. Perfect, thank um, you. Hi, sir. Um, and he says, ah. Uh, Dining set for all of you, yes? Are we are we eating? Is this like breakfast time or lunch time or are we sort of uh, in the It's middle? probably just almost lunch time. As long as it's better lunch than that shite I ate out in the street. Uh, sure, we'll, we'll take some food. Very good. And he goes yeah. over and kind of reaches behind the bar and takes a tablecloth that seems to be like it's trying to be a white tablecloth um you see as he fluffs it out it's been patched numerous times um certain stains tried to remove but can't quite be removed he sets it over one of these tables and then takes out some very tarnished candlesticks and sets them out lights each of the candles goes and sets chargers plates a full set of silverware at each place and two or three glasses for every place. Proper glassware for whatever anyone is drinking, plus an extra one, and sets it all out. And you have a very oddly um, formal uh, dining set in front of you now. Um, Does it look clean? uh, uh, mm, uh, Make a uh, investigation check. (laughs) Well, the natural five plus seven is Y'all were so 12. Scared. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it doesn't, you don't think it's soiled, but you notice one of the patches. You kind don't of don't like, break out the black light. One of the patches <laughs> has some sort of something on it and you kind of scrape at it with your finger and you can see the cloth below is actually blue, but it looks like it's been just Compl- uh, continuously dusted with like white flour or something just to make it look white so it will be a solid white tablecloth that's so weird are, are the plates and silverware clean-ish though the things that I will be eating off of <laughs> um, yes they do seem um, metal as well but too light to be fully metal uh, one of them seems to even have broken and been repaired badly at one point. It's clearly ceramic inside, maybe hammered with tin or something like that, just to make it look like true heavy pewterware or silverware. Okay. Um, when, when he walks away, I'm going to press to digitate my, my place setting to make sure everything is clean. Okay. Do, do you mind, Melvin? Sure. Thank you. Hi. 
on the okay. signal to mine. I'll do as many of them as I can before he comes back, so not to be rude. And he then passes out um, a uh, uh, a preface menu, um, which has a couple options on it. Um, there are just a couple words that say corpse flower nectar tarts, bearded devils, stone rolls, carrot sticks, rat fingers, deviled griffin eggs, bits and pieces, and angel wings. Did you say corpse flower tart? That's mm -hmm. concerning as fuck. Rat fingers. So Nether cannot read, so uh, if somebody could <laughs> take it upon her themselves to, to help her out. Uh, Nether, uh, uh, what, what do you like to eat? Like, what do you like? Um, what do you want? What do you like? What do you feel like? Is there any, any soup? Um, ah, soup. Well, I could certainly... How, how about this, good, good sir? What would you consider a good breakfast? You're yourself. What would you eat? Ah, right. Well, if that were the case, I would certainly start out with uh, some stone rolls and then move on to the bearded devils and maybe finish up with a nice little, uh, some bits and pieces. No, just, just to be clear, we'll pay you the, the price that, that you're asking, but we mm. want, we want good food, <laughs> not, not fancy food well speak for yourself i want fancy food <laughs> all right then then i want good food i this is la bran uh, la blanchisserie de mentlieus so what is anything that? is going to be good hmm. i just sort of absentmindedly like point toward i don't even know what i pick at i i'm just listening to the music and i absentmindedly point at something on the menu so okay. however many Options there are. I'll roll a die. <laughs> is this what is this we what you yourself eat? We will prepare selections from the chef for you. Yes. Is this what you yourself eat in the morning? Ah, uh, well. No. Oh, well, if I can have the time to make it for myself, absolutely. I'd like to try an insight check to get just how is this? Is this fellow like? How much is he lying? I guess is the question I want to. Okay. I'm pretty sure he's yeah, lying. Yeah, make, a, uh, make an insight would you like check. Some, would you like some help? Um, he says he'll give you some time and turns away. I want to check and goes the line check so you guys can discuss. Um, uh, yeah, I don't have a bonus to this, so um, it might be better off that you make your own check. I can do it with okay. advantage if you want to help me. I will absolutely. Kind of lean over and say, Breon, what's, what's oh with that guy? God, I've got your guys' is cursed. I rolled a six and a seven. Uh, Fourteen. <laughs> He's all at sixes and sevens. Six and <sighs> sevens. Okay, that's it. Next time, I'm just rolling insight myself. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why is everything either at sixes or at sevens? Tell me um, why. <laughs> and... Uh, you so you get the sense that he oh, do I have is... a d6 inspiration I, I can use would you like to well, yes save it really okay i'll save it, it only lasts save for the one it. session so I mean, like oh. if he, we know better. there's 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 you know it's it's all facade here right yeah right yeah yep well, it's not much of a facade if you're putting like rat's fingers yeah that's the thing i mean is it, is it is it a facade over like Oh, like complete. I mean, nether's eaten worse, but um, I don't know. I'm guessing it's yeah. just themed food, like you get at Halloween and stuff. Or is it? That's but it's not Halloween, James. <laughs> well, here it's not. Have you lived here all your life? Are you asking the mm -hmm. the yeah. uh, barkeep again? Mm -hmm. Well, so first, the result of the role. He is not being particularly truthful um but he the weird part is is that what when you asked him 
what he would eat that was the point when you got that he was being sort of the most untruthful but you saw him kind of clutch at his stomach and um i guess with jade's passive perception anyone else who can perceive passively a 15 or higher saw him kind of touch his stomach and as he did his seems to be a portly man but the stomach just kind of pushed away it's almost like he's wearing either a pillow or something underneath mm. to give the impression of him being a little bit overweight and well fed um, and there was he said yes he would eat this but there was kind of a yearning behind that um, that was a lie so he comes back to your table after Prion has communicated that and as you ask he says I am Demetrius like the rest uh, is that a lie <laughs> certainly doesn't uh, sound like all the others that seems to be true my passive okay. insight is 17 by the way spent some time on spent some time in the navy well we were thinking that perhaps we could have um i don't know uh if there's anybody else in the tavern who happens to not be from here maybe we could all have a bit of a meal together would you be so kind as to point any of them out well I'm not sure if that's he kind of can't hide the fact that he looks over the corner and uh, let me be right back and get some a food order put in to my chefs and um, I will be back in a moment and he um, kind of goes Dahl is going to follow him as he goes back in uh, this I, <laughs> yeah. and he walks I'm gonna back I'm going to go see where and, the sausage is made um, a, uh, you see him go and he takes off his apron and hangs it on a wall and you can see that indeed there is a pillow sewn to the inside of it to make him look larger he has this frail form and this um, uh, woman about the same age you can only imagine that is his wife they're both preparing they both begin to um prepare some food um <clears throat> and you can hear him uh you can hear him say um something about did you get did you get the heads and she just ah, ordered the shrimp this morning so we'll have to use yesterday's and uh, he's just Are they still all right yeah they should be fine I don't think the cats got to him before that. Okay. And you can see she has this bucket and she takes out what looked to be discarded shrimp heads from like a nicer restaurant or something and drop them in what seems to be sort of this boiling um, uh, endless um, uh, stew kind of thing with some just boiling water that seems to have just been sitting there bubbling um, and just begin to make this food it seems like leftovers upon leftovers upon leftovers which are being then repurposed into dishes that are supposedly trying to look really fancy they become shrimp heads decorated croutons and um Lastly, there are some bruschetta. What the rest of things, indeed, the bits and pieces seem to be a slice of stale bread topped with the shavings, the little bits of fat and minced meat, kind of cooked together and placed on the uh, on a um, crouton. I I don't think we should eat too heavily here. Can we just leave? No, no. We, we, we need we information. Should... Exactly. So, like, a basket of bread for the table and then drinks all around and then see who we can buy more drinks for? Get some social... At this point, um, kind of skulking over, you see this... Um... This man in the left, bottom left-hand corner, is that guy? Indeed, no, a figure <laughs> wearing a, um overcoat. It's plain, but nice. And same with the, the vest that he's wearing. It looks almost like a military garb, a rapier at their side. They're barefoot, but that seems to be quite natural in the fact that this is a 
um, the hair completely covering the body. This is a tabaxi who sits down oh. and says, You're not Warm sands. Warm sands. Um, no, what gave us away? Ah, stumbling. <laughs> also, ordering food from this place. Big mistake. I would not eat too much of it. We, uh, we're just getting that idea. Hmm. Well, please, let me introduce myself. My name is, uh, is, uh, uh Bitter Wind, they call me. Hmm. Have you heard of my exploits yet? No. DM, have we? <laughs> Does that name sound familiar? Yeah, that, that's a that's a great question. Um, uh, no, it doesn't. Ah, you must not have been here for very long then. I Literally danced with the Duchess last Ooh. masquerade. Hmm. And when was the last masquerade? It was five days ago. There's is a masquerade about every okay. seven days. So I was gonna ask. Is that because it's the carnival season? No, it's just the way of life here. What happens to those that are not invited? Oh. Well, it is a disappointment. It is a great social boost to be seen there. Or if you're like me and gather enough attention, you can dance with the Duchess herself. You would not believe the luxury this has afforded me. Hmm. From Lance Corporal for... to living legend have I gone, yes. <laughs> but, but so that's only gonna last for six or seven days, right? And then if you don't dance with the Duchess again, you'll be back at where you were? Hmm. Well, it will decline slowly, I suppose, but... Uh, did did you get kind of seem... Suddenly thing. you are asking all the questions now. <laughs> I, mean... I want to know who all you are. Why are you here in Port Alusin, the place which is very much not what it seems? Hmm? I see a crew from... I saw the flag come in earlier. You must be the ones from Saltmarsh. And someone, well, some of you, a magic being, yes? One who wears Valkyr's symbol, very interesting. You, sir, heavily armed, heavily, heavily armed. And you, little miss, from the deep places. Yes, the deepest. Why did you come here? Um, I, I, um... Again, Serene was not expecting to be talking to anyone, so she's kind of looking off into the distance and has to snap back to her reality at the table. Um, I, I'm sorry, um, I came, uh, to, to do my, uh, my, um, so I'm a holy warrior. I, I serve Persona, um, and I, I came to do Persona's work on, on land to make my, my pilgrimage. You are here to evangelize. Why did all of you come to Port Alusin specifically? It is, are you here for, well. Certainly We're looking for someone. Oh. Yeah. Definitely. Good, good. Who, if I may ask? That is kind of the uh, million gold question. Hold, please. One second. <laughs> checking notes. Checking notes. Checking notes. Um, I believe it is a lady in red. This is information that I would have shared with the group earlier. Ah. I think I did. In fact, um, a lady in red at the masquerade. Mm. 
Well, red is very popular right now, but uh, no one wears it quite so fiercely as Duchess Donaire herself. Hmm. We received invitations from the Duchess herself, then. As did I. Then I look forward to having a splendid evening with you. Hmm. Likewise. Where you know, I killed eating? a captain in the Navy in a duel. Apparently, the way his wife was looking at me was very insulting. I spilled his blood upon the very floor of the masquerade. That's when she asked me to dance. Hmm. Dangerous Again, place I'm sure you'll hear the story eventually, but that... First-hand account. Now I must say, all of you, you're not from around here. This society is rigid and unforgiving in ways. Whether or not you agree with it, you will need to find a way to dress appropriately. Duchess Donaire does not do kindly with those who uh, lessens the standard at her balls, yes. Uh, where where might we go to um, both to procure outfits, but but also to, um, to to get advice on how to properly dress? Virtually impossible at this point. You see, mm. not many of the finest uh, the finest clothing is all purchased up at this point, um, repurposed, patched, and refurbished by those with some money. Every bit of thread and raw material gone into maintaining their peacock nature. That is the way of this place. Uh, with so late notice, people spend their entire week and months hoping to strut the streets with the right gown so that they may be invited, put their savings. They starve themselves for a week so they can buy that bit of brocade. You see, it is the way here. And so most of it is bought up. I have... <laughs> I do have an idea, though. There are... Well, two ideas, maybe. It has become a bit of a fashion to wear costumes to the ball. Not just fancy clothes, but actual costumes. A bit more fanciful. Something like this, he indicates towards Sarayan. Maybe a possibility, something foreign and well-constructed. And for those of you looking for something different, well, there may be a place. I've heard there's a group called at the, uh, the three uh, what is it called? The Three Odd Gables. Some women there who do extraordinary work. For a price. Um, and it is looked down upon to go all the way over to their houses by the people at large and the upper houses, so Sometimes something might be available. Look there, dress yourselves up, and tomorrow night, well, perhaps we can all dance together, no? Um, one last question uh, about the masks. Uh, what, it, what is in fashion, and how should we go about obtaining them? Ah, right now, a metallic finish. Nothing of this clay and this... Uh, matte finish of the last month. No, no, no. Now it is metallic finish with grand feathers. That is the way. Just as a point of curiosity, do you have any sense of how long ago it would have been in fashion to have a mask that displays the face of an animal? Ugh. Animals. That must have been... Well, before I came here, before my time. Which was... Maybe decades. Decades. Animals. 
Ah, who knows? You could start another trend. But uh, it's best when when uh, Duchess Donaire sets the trends, though. Um, that is always the safe pattern to follow. When is the masquerade? Next evening. So oh, you yeah. are okay. midday, and it's the following evening. So, costumes. There is a opera house down the road. Perhaps they could outfit you. And further down the road, as is very convenient for you, I suppose, is the three old gables. You will not miss them. They have their name for a reason. What about somewhere proper to eat? <laughs> for that, I would go fishing, friend. <laughs> or pay a fortune. Fishing it is, then. D DM, can I make an insight check? Does this person seem trustworthy? In any sure. way. Literally everything he just told us was completely... We just do opposite of everything he said. We'll be fine. Uh, I've got a total <laughs> of 17. Yeah. Uh, there's mischief there, but um, there's genuinely in the sense that he likes the idea of someone new, someone different coming to the uh, masquerade, and he, he thinks this idea of sort of the interlopers here is very... Um, uh, very intriguing. Great. Masquerade. Anyway, don't you don't you dare sing that. <laughs> Paper faces on parade. That's not what I was thinking. Uh, oh, okay. What do you Stop think? It. Should we should we just leave a little money and go watch Prion fish? But, but we we haven't even gotten our drinks yet. I don't think oh. we should. Try. We should risk it. Oh, okay. But we should definitely leave a few pieces of gold. I think. You don't understand. Based on what I'm seeing back there, you're, you're probably going to be drinking literal Rats horse pit. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm not saying that we should like ingest anything from here, but like leave them a couple coins or something. Oh, no, I, I think that's. Yeah, we can be, leave them something. Nice. That's fine. I'll go fishing then. Okay, so you guys uh, oh. head out, and um, this this whole town kind of wraps around the coast and the bays, so um, it's not too far down this area oh. till um, everything turns, the um, atmosphere turns just a bit again. Now it's uh, um, firmly sort of middle class. Uh, Prion, the fish actually are not... Um, they're, they're pretty plentiful here. About an hour, two. You feel like you could catch a couple. Um, I can enough to feed big. your group. You will get some strange looks while you are doing this. But, um... I'm going underwater. Uh, how oh, you're far? actually hunting. You're, like, <laughs> swimming how, around and hunting fish, fish underwater. Like, yeah. He's <laughs> pretty on hunting. He takes, yeah. his, he takes his rod and his reel and he actually goes underwater and casts <laughs> yeah. in the water. Uh, like, <laughs> DM, how are how far are we from the from where it was suggested that three odd gables is at this point? Um, you are getting close. You can see where the town sort of ends in a forested hill. Um, mm -hmm. Before that, though, you do pass um, a large building that you can see is labeled, or there's a sign that. Uh, entitles it the Red Widow Theater. Um, this air of exuberant wealth continues to fade and it, it's replaced by that same modern, sturdy, sort of middle-class home. Um, you see more children playing in the streets now, uh, workshops and such. And now standing in contrast to this neighborhood is a tall stone building with ivy-like wooden trim adorning its corners, eaves, and windowsills. The wood is painted red and black, 
and the ornaments look almost like a decorated mask for the building itself. The cobblestone street begins to fade into dirt, but lined up outside it are about a dozen or more carriages, each marked with a unique coat of arms or another status indicative symbol. A roar of laughter gently emanates from within, followed by the soft hiss of an applause. As you notice, this is the Red Widow Theater. Seems to be some type of show happening inside it at the moment. I've never actually been Let's inside take a, a theater. Let's go. I want to look inside. Gonna go look inside. Do you want to go look inside? <laughs> I I don't I don't say that. I just walk in that direction. <laughs> as I'm like, are you saying it as you walk? I want to go look I'm inside. Gonna go. Yeah. I'll take no. it. I'm still fishing at this point. Yep. So um, we will. We will consider the group fed by just basic, maybe magic roasted fish <laughs> that uh, Prion has gathered. <laughs> Firebolt. Uh. <laughs> All right. I really like this. Catch King another Christy. one. So again, Experiment indicated is this distances is a away place where you fire. could prop potentially gather some clothes in order to. Um, you know, be enough, uh, be dressed enough for admittance into this masquerade. You enter and uh, you peek inside, and immediately there is a um, a thin woman um, in what looks to be performer's clothes. They are nice. They are decorated with um, there's some lace and ribbons and stuff, kind of streaming from tight-fitting clothing. She has uh, sort of. Um, thin stringy hair and you can see pointed ears indicative of a half elf and um, her skin is almost like a little bit yellowish um, doesn't look super healthy but nonetheless her physique suggests that quite a um, nimble person and she uh, kind of oh, stops as you enter like, oh ah, latecomers uh, newcomers ah, same thing really you look, are you all new to the city then? Entirely. Good. Um, we saved some special seats just for, um, for, for that type. Um, all the box seats and stuff are full of the nobility and whatnot. Oh, of so, course, um, certainly. would you mind if I showed you in? Uh, which direction are we headed? Ah, Forward, this way, please. Up? She leads you around the side of the building, sort of okay. towards the front, what you imagine would be the stage area. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, sure. I'll, I'll follow. Okay. And as she's gathering all of you, um, the uh, she, she leads you around the corner and in a little um, side door and says, some of the seats just in front. You'll have to be very quiet. And we're going to have to wait till a um, short uh, sort of intermission and in the acts before we can get you all fully seated. But um, here, come come this way. She kind of leads you up and through some narrow passages. Um, at one point, you see another masked face kind of whoop, swoop in upside down and look at all of you as they're hanging from ropes from a rigging system. And um, another thin person in these sort of Harlequin-like garb kind of waves at you. Um, it's a very sort of circusy vibe in here as these um, thin, almost half-elven looking uh, they almost almost look like they're from the same family, all kind of dart about um, doing things. And you hear some laughter, and then a lull from the audience rises and then fades. Well, and you hear a would, almost like wouldn't a laughter and a lull be the same thing? Oh, well. <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! Get out! And you <laughs> move in um, slowly to a, um, an area where it's like, okay, the stairs are just behind this. Um, fabric right here so uh we're just going to wait a moment so if you all would just stand right here and she kind of brings you all in and you hear you see a couple people just uh, walking and rigging about so we'll I, uh, bring you down like and make, down in front make an insight check um yeah. if i may sure are we about to be part of the show make an insight check i've got a passive of 17. I'm going to add, let's see, what do I roll? You have a passive insight of 17. 
Oh, shit. Huh. I have a natural 20 on that roll, DM. Hey, hey. Um, you get a very strong feeling that um, you um, are, there is definite mischief about to happen. Uh, I think I'm gonna hang back. I'm interested in seeing a show, not necessarily being part of one. Well, that would be... What? That's uh, preposterous, and she kind of looks to the... Absolutely. Um, looks... Completely, pre completely preposterous. I just... Uh, I'll, I'll be back here. Um, so, uh, as she kind of looks up at the... Uh, um, at the ropes above her then um she gives a little whistle a high-pitched one and just you see nether beginning to back away and you hear then suddenly the sound get much louder as suddenly this heavy velvet curtain in front of you is pulled up in front of you you see a well-lit theater probably 300 um uh, attendees all sitting in front of you um and there are lit by a dozen chandeliers all hanging around and beyond it maybe the similar these similar like softer lights all just kind of glow in the ceiling which disappears into blackness the lighting is kind of hurts your eyes as the light the footlights little lamps um containing fire at the front of the stage um um start to flare up and you are cast in bright light standing before a crowd of Dementlius aristocracy and she announces Nether casts My friends invisibility. of Dementlius, I give you visitors from Saltmarsh. Let's see what they can do, shall ne we? <laughs> Nether casts invisibility on herself and okay. is gone. I cast mage armor. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you cast. All of a sudden, the mage armor comes up, and um, we will um, actually, as we get to this, as um, you are being stared at by about 400 people on this strange stage with these sort of acrobats all surrounding and like cartwheeling around you at this very moment. Uh, a little bit early, but that is where we will um, head to break for the. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for sticking with us in the quest to find appropriate clothing. The crew of Pixie's Fury is finding their way to a strange little um, part of Dement Lea and Port Alusine called the Three Odd Gables. On the way, they stopped into the theater to check it out and were um, led by one of the performers to a side entrance. She assured them, oh, it's fine. Let's head over here. We'll get you to some front seats and... They climbed up a few steps and were standing in front of a big piece of cloth when suddenly Nether went invisible. And um, she whistled, and now you are standing with bright lights shining upon all of you, and the curtain has risen. And you're all just standing there, just looking out at three to four hundred people who are all staring back at you. A few of the tumblers and such had kind of herded you into certain positions and now you just stand there and you can hear subtle coughing just kind of the breathing of the audience just staring at you there's no music there's no set there's nothing to indicate what to do oh and by the way the images on there are just um examples of who led you onto the stage and what they looked like so they are now off stage and the seven of you now stand across the stage brightly illuminated with no instructions. Like. You hear kind of a <coughs> cough from the audience. Do, are the tumblers doing anything or are they just. Oh, they've off? just gone off stage. It's just they're you guys. Good. Sorry. Cool. Well, this is a shit and, show, isn't it? <laughs> I knew oh, you were kind of. <laughs> kind of uh, 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 mumbling laughter sort of ripple through the cloud, crowd as you say that. I 
swing my violin case off my back, I will open it and I will pull out my instrument. You hear whisper, 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 whisper. No, no, actually, before I do that, I'm going to wave my bow in sort of a wide circle. And um, in doing so, I'm going to cast Enhance Ability Charisma <laughs> before okay. I do anything else. And as the magic sort of sparkles, you hear, oh, and you can see, feel the audience sort of leaning forward in their seats. Um, I'll start playing something. Make a performance check. We do this on just a couple couple krakens and see what happens. Uh, twenty five. Uh, <laughs> you you guys see Mariah begin to play, and the um audience just goes absolutely quiet. And after um <clears throat> about a minute or two of her playing, there is uproarious applause and uh, a brief standing ovation. And then they quickly sit down, looking at what's next, looking between each one of you. Mariah, that is a resounding success. But they are curious in seeing what each and every person from Salt Marsh is about. So um, it is up to you completely what you do to entertain, to shock, to confuse, or do what you will to this crowd, but their eyes are on you. Sarayan oh, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Um, feels like this is this could be a really great moment uh, to talk about. Persona. Oh no! <laughs> um, I. <laughs> As, as you can feel wave at your back. Yes. 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 <laughs> so like, oh, I I do try to get Sarayan's attention. I'm, I'm I'm as as she's having her little moment. I'm like low key with my bow arm. Like you can see Mariah just kind of waving at you very subtly. <laughs> Hi, Mariah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> hello. And Hail hear and you. Well met. Hail and well met. Um, <laughs> my name is. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Sarayan Alerna. As you can see, I am a Triton uh, Paladin, which, for those of you who are without um, religion, uh, means that I am a holy warrior. Um, and. Um, Speaking of religion, have you heard the good word of Persana? Um, if you have, if you enjoy beautiful architecture like this building around us, you will also enjoy the the, the words of Persona because he loved architecture and was a great architect. Um, it looks like some of you, based on what you're wearing. I'm seeing a lot of skin out there from everybody, weirdly. Um, could, could, uh, <laughs> you hear a couple <laughs> whistles, woo, woo, and just like some yelling. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe could use a, a, a little religion. So if uh, you want to talk to me after, afterwards, um, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> and sorry, and picks up wave. <laughs> <laughs> and just shapes wave in the air. <laughs> There's this like <laughs> the rum of energy that emanates from wave and you can feel it just kind of whoosh, cascade across all of the people, their hair kind of being blown back and just feeling this energy from this proselytizing sentient trident. <laughs> and um, they just sit there for a second. Uh, Sarayan, make a uh, persuasion check. <laughs> This could be a lot of things this going for big. you. So um, this could be big. I love DM, this. I wonder whether I, I could this. aid her. Is um, that something before you, you announce the uh, result of that role there, Sarayan? Um, how would you aid Mariah? 
So, um, what I would do as, as I realize she's going off, going her own way with this, uh, I was, I was gonna, um, make a suggestion, but I, I see she's going down her, her path with wave here. So instead, um, as she's talking very, very lightly play on my violin and it has the ability to create, um, sort of illusory, um, images in the air. And so I kind of want to surround Sarayan with like sort of bluish um wispy waves and um sort of like holy images of persona but like you know sort of fanciful um just give give a little extra yeah. oomph yeah so like after you episode a futurama where fry writes the opera and he plays exactly some weird that. instrument and it all yeah okay it's exactly so that. Uh, you see Saray and um, you begin to talk and Mariah has kind of waved at you, but then you see her, she kind of gives you a wink as you start to talk and you see then the form, sort of mythological form of Persona flash in a bit of light next to you as you talk. And then you Whoa. see waves as you talk about his might whoosh, crashing behind you, the glowing blue light sort of contrasting beautifully with your coral skin. You know Mariah's got your back in this moment, and you feel absolutely like you got this. So go ahead and roll that check with advantage. Great, because uh, I did need it. So uh, that will be a fifteen. Okay, fifteen's good. Fifteen's good. Um, the uh, um. You can hear the crowd getting a little bit rowdy. Some of them begin to yell out certain things about something ah, better than we got here or um, um, uh, <laughs> that someone says something about you. You did mention come see me afterwards. So you hear a couple comments along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is a cabaret oh and you seem to have very much entertained them. So oh, this is so fun. <laughs> okay, uh, Sarayan. So Sarayan beams exuberantly because she's never felt so accepted in her life. And Aww. she turns beaming to Mariah and whispers, thank you. And then tries to wink, but it comes, she's like, <laughs> like a not a good wink and it took a lot of effort. <laughs> You, you hear then a voice in the back of your head that says, the marriage route seems very effective. How many people are you allowed to marry in your culture? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, oh, only one, I think. Hmm. Well, we will look for other avenues. Should I marry Good more job. people? <laughs> if they convert, marry as many as you can. Okay, wait. <laughs> So, um, Inaris, you've been following the group. You've been chastised by multiple people in this city about not wearing the proper clothing. And you now know that in order to complete your mission here, which is to, you really need to go and meet the lady in red to figure out more. You've learned that this is the Duchess Cedra Donaire who hosts these grand masquerades. You've been given invitations you do not have the proper clothing. You've been told that there are two locations where you can perhaps find these. You're in one of them right now, which is a cabaret, a um, sort of, um, the, they call it the Red Widow Theater. You were told you were being led on to some front row seats reserved specifically for uh, visitors, but you were led on. And as you were standing near a place, they said, oh, we'll just, wait for a lull and then lead you out there. Suddenly the curtain <laughs> rose, lights come up and you all were just standing on the stage alone in front of about 400 Dementlius people with no instructions. Mariah started to play, pl played a beautiful um, melody. Sarayan tried to convert a bunch of people to the worship of Persana. And now the rest of you just stand there. Everyone expects to see a little bit of these <clears throat> interlopers from Salt Marsh, what they're all about. So everyone will need to do something to try to 
entertain, shock, or otherwise appease the onlooking to get crowd. Talise is uh, attention. Talise. Okay. What? what? I think we have something to do if we've got to be a performing monkey. Speak up, eh? I'm talking to her. Shut your face. I uh, <laughs> I pour out a uh, <laughs> I put down like a, a bowl from my pack and I pour it with water. And then I, uh, I shape the water to come out of the bowl like a seahorse, and or multiple seahorses, and then send them over to Talise. Oh, oh, Jade, I had such a cool idea, and I like this more. Okay, you're welcome. Talise, oh. these animated watery seahorses begin to sort of horsey their way over to you. <laughs> Seahorsey. So they're mobile capital S. How does one horsey? <laughs> I don't know. You have to see them. I'm not a okay. seahorse. I can't tell you. Well, while the... When Jade was casting his, I definitely would like to cast um, Fog Cloud focused around the bowl of water. Okay. So that now it looks like the seahorses are coming out of the fog. Mm -hmm. And oh, gotcha. then, yes. So it's like a theatrical then, mist that everyone loves. <laughs> yes, it's a free everyone loves environmentally a haze stage, friendly. Especially when you have to sing. But uh, Ex so exactly. immediately, people immediately start coughing. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is vapor. It's it's fog, not smog. It's fine. Gotcha. <laughs> um, um, okay, and then. Yeah. I'm not going to be shown up by, <laughs> by everybody else. Now I'm very competitive. And then I want to um, take over the water that he sent towards me. And I'd like to turn that into some birds. Like some seagull bird shapes because they're water. Mm -hmm. And have them start to fly up towards the ceiling. Like the middle of the theater, the house as far as I can get that range on there. Okay. And then... You're like reading from your notes. <laughs> I am. I wrote a really, I wrote a really wow. cool pattern. And then what Jade came up What a weird thing to be that, prepared so. for. Good job. <laughs> I'm no, I'm, I'm, I'm completely Everyone else was talking awesome. and so I was coming up with a plan. <clears throat> um, oh, it's good. Yeah, so then the birds, are, I want to have them circle around the top for a while, and then I'm going to drop the fog and have the birds come back to me. And then when they get to me, I would like to cast Destroy Water and then Sunlight issuing from my cloak, the brooch that I have for Valkyrie. Wow. That sounds pretty dang cool between the two of you. Um, We're amazing. Please both make... Um, I won't do caster level checks because I want you to be able to use your proficiency modifier. So we'll do spell attack rolls just so you can add that in. Um, do you want me to do one for every single one of that chain of levels? One is okay. And let's see if... Uh, what did you roll, Prion? I haven't rolled yet. But I've already got a plus two. I rolled an 18. Natural. So that's a dirty that's good. 20. Well, I was going to have to use my D6 inspiration there. And then Shape Water doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it should be at the top of your the spell section. It should say spell attack. Yeah. Actually, there you go. Go to did roll. Ah. Okay. That was fun. Sorry. I've got to shut this off. That's like random feedback happening for no good reason at all. All right. It got jealous of my cool performance. Um, so what, um, sorry, are you going with the 11 to lease? I know you do have potentially bardic do, inspiration, do, right? Do you want me to use that? I thought, okay. I thought you had it maybe. I thought I saw that in chat. I so thought so and then I, I yeah, and then I, I got it's rid a, of it because I decided it was two weeks old. So. Oh no! Uh, sorry, that's different. Uh, it's it's stale, but it's not fun. It's yeah, not fungal here yeah. last week. So. It's not shrimp heads. Yeah. <laughs> stale, okay, so but then... not fungal. 
<laughs> you know. <Aww. laughs> Could you imagine getting that as your performance review? It was stale, but not fungal. <laughs> I I prefer not to revisit that memory. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> not the worst review I've ever seen. <laughs> Oh, that's good. 15s uh, and a 20. Yeah, so 15 total. Super impressive. The crowd is, um, uh, you, you see now people actually beginning to throw what seem to be drinks of water up in the air, kind of mocking and celebrating this amazing display of animated water that they just saw. Um, definitely a success. Raise a sharp icicles as they drop back down. <laughs> yeah. And people Oops. cry out in pain, and then nah, people really. cry out in even greater approval. No, no. Like, Don't mess with us. <laughs> we we slayed him. <laughs> they're all dead. I I cannot hear you, Melvin. I'm muted. muted That's why. Melvin. There we go. Uh, Melvin's going to step forward, um, and he's going to uh, take his book and lay it down on the floor in front of him and um, cast fly. And as he does, a large column of paper is going to shoot out of the, the book and flutter down around him, coalescing into paper um, layered wings. So the, the paper is going to, to layer itself one on top of another and spread out and become wings. Um, and he will, he will fly up and then uh, cast prestidigitation to make small illusory um, or prestidigitation, minor illusion, one of those two. He has both um, to make little uh, feathers float in the air around him and sp sparkle gently. That is super duper cool. Um, roll that uh, spell attack. All right. Spell attack. That their spell attack. Okay, that did not go through. I'm just going to roll firebolt in that case. Well, that's awesome <laughs> i've rolled a natural one <laughs> um <laughs> this is the first time i've cast this spell since i learned it i will not uh, fly so i may have miscast yes yeah so you kind of go up and you feel like i'm doing this you're, you're really super focused on it and <laughs> the wings are out and you can hear people begin to cheer but you're confused it looks so impressive as you're doing your presentation and you just hear people going what 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 you hear mumbling what i just i don't i'm good where where does he go where and you realize that you've got so inside you've just flown straight up and you have flown above the curtain level <laughs> and uh as you've been concentrating on the casting no one can see you anymore so you've just gone whoop, which was immediately impressive but in the long term just more just kind of confusing <laughs> nice and you come face to face you see this um half elvish woman in a mask uh, kind of clinging on to the ropes just kind of hanging up in the rigging and just looks at you and kind of smi smiles and kind of says um, oh no, hello is there, handsome. <laughs> and uh, that's about it. <laughs> all right. I believe Inaris, after all your companions have stepped up, I didn't miss anyone else. And then Nether as well is waiting invisibly. So Nether, you're sitting there invisibly. Inaris, all your, your companions, you don't see um, Nether, but have stepped forward to try to entertain, shock, impress this crowd with mostly, with most success. M most of them have been successful. <sighs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> so we have to perform like a bunch of monkeys? Great. <sighs> Speak up there, cannot hear you. And Iris, mm -hmm. tell them a joke, you're good at them. They told me to speak up too. You just have to yell at them. They seem to like it. You like yelling at people, do it. Yeah. Well, and uh, that's all the encouragement she needs. So with that, she is going to yell her, uh, do I want to do that one or do I want to, I was trying to decide which one I wanted to do. Dun, 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 dun. We're gonna yell my word of radiance and cause this this huge bright light to just appear and then explode out and it 
goes towards the crowd and just this huge shape of a raven and every beat of the wing of its wings is just sparks of light going everywhere <laughs> gotcha um go ahead and roll a spell attack some of the people in the front go ah i cannot <laughs> see it all i am blind <laughs> and oh, like uh attack. start to panic about what's happening here <laughs> It's a, it's a seven. <laughs> I hope I don't accidentally kill anybody. It's just a just, regular spell attack. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why it won't show up here, but it should be in the logbook. It, it was a seven. Okay, seven total. Mm-hmm. What's I just roll one. Yours always says custom roll. It should, it should say, okay, it says plus five spell attack, and then I click it. Oh, I did click it, and it will... So You click the little dice next to it? Mm -hmm. So yours is a 12, then. I don't know why yours always says custom roll. It's, yeah, it's just beyond 20, spell attack. D&D &D Beyond hates me. That's all good. So 12 is, 12, um, is actually um, a couple people um, dive out of the way as this flash of incredible powerful um, Raven Queen energy emanates from you and some people actually dive over the back of their seats you create this little mini ripple of panic as some people again jump over their seats and two or three rows are sort of displaced as they kind of look back over and then sort of look around lying in each other's laps being an absolute mess again that the theater just begins to erupt in laughter <laughs> and Anaris is just standing there coolly and mysteriously. Yeah, just crosses her arms. Nether. Yeah. All right, I really hope this works. Did you say that this lady here with the Harlequin mask was a half elf? Mm hmm. Mm, rats. <sighs> well. What the hell? I'm going to go for it anyway. Um, so I'm going to, is she nearby? Um, you can see her sort of off in the wings, leaning against a pole, kind of looking off in your direction. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to sort of come walking over to her while um, Inaris's thing is happening. And just sort of say, that's quite a fun little trick you played on us. I have a few of my own. And I'm going to cast Phantasmal Force upon her. Oh, say, God. Akritha Silith. Um, interesting. Interesting! Um, let's see. Is that a wisdom save? It is. <laughs> If she's a half elf, she has advantage because it is. I believe it is. I have is, an eight. You have an eight. Oh, uh, let me just double check here. It's. Oh, it's an intelligence save. Uh, okay, right. Wait a minute. Yeah. No, it's an intelligence. Forces, yeah, I yep, still have an eight. All right. Okay. So as I finish casting it, I send Doll to whisper in um, um, Prion's ear, and I say, "Have your seagull." Strut up and down the stage. I'll do that then. And I make her think that the seagull is that very impressive admiral that we all saw. And that he looks very displeased. Okay. So she becomes... She takes damage from that, right, too? If, if, the, if, the, if the creature attacks, she takes damage. Okay. So you then, God, this is brutal. You see the seagull kind of just strutting across the stage and then the um, sort of lead actress acrobat here kind of uh, sort of drops down and bows to it. And as it comes closer, she keeps backing up and uh, imploring it. Oh, by all means, sir, I did not realize that you were back here. I am so sorry. Please let me find you a better seat. I beg you, sir, please. Uh, I, I am sorry about what these people have done. No, 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 do not laugh at the Admiral, please. Take off but, your clothing. This is... <laughs> ah. 
But leave the so? mask on. Uh, uh. And you can see that uh, she begins to slowly remove a glove and some other little bits. Um, kind of takes out part of the costume and is in this. Um, Come now, make a show of it. Corset. There is an audience. Uh, can it, can other people, <laughs> wow. Um, you guys can see Nether just staring at this as it's happening and um, the seagull marching around and this woman looking absolutely terrified as she's beginning to now uh, remove her shoes. T -T -M, and, can I, can I yeah. look around up in the rafters here and see if I can find the, the rope that is holding the curtain up? <clears throat> um, Yes. Um, make a quick investigation check as this happens. Sure. It'll take another minute. Um, this uh, uh, that's going to be a twenty-one. Yep, you see it. Um, you see two things that have cut. We'll drop the curtain. I'd like to firebolt them. Okay. Um, as he prepares to do that, um, I think it would be pretty clear. I, I've had high enough passive that I think I would notice him trying to do something. So I'm going to quickly sort of step out towards the front and say to the amassed crowd, if anyone would like to see the crew of the Pixies Fury, we will be at the uh, Masquerade Ball come tomorrow night. So come check us out there. And I really hope the curtain comes down as I'm starting to say that. So. And you Melvin can talk to me about attack. Persona. <laughs> make two attack rolls um well i've got i've rolled two natural 13s um okay plus seven, Th that'll so do it both uh, without your modifier um it's just a stationary object so <laughs> they go up and you see this sort of weird undulation of some of the ropes up top as it kind of everything sways around to it's, it's less like a ship than you would think. Everything seems a little bit more elastic up there and then falls, the curtain drops down, covering the um, uh, the scene. And you hear this uproarious applause and you can then hear some of the other MCs out there begin to usher the crowd out. Apparently the show is now over. I have the seagull continue to speak. I think that this costume would look far better on some of these people here. Do you not think so? Uh, Nether, what are you doing? Oh, just finding costumes. Do, do we really need to divest someone of their clothing in order to accomplish that? They have costumes in the back? I don't like the trick that she people? played on us. I think that was in very poor taste. I don't like being made a spectacle like that when I'm not prepared for it. Hmm. I think she I should learn a lesson. My violin. I'm Just gonna quickly. slowly float back to the ground. Um a couple of the others then come around as she's just in now basically their costume is scattered about she's just in her corset and um, shorts basically now and one of the other half elves um, the one in the uh, sort of black and white clip comes up to her kind of, ah no come on wake up slaps her on the side of the face a couple times and she goes ah. she looks up and says <sighs> yeah Which one of you did that? We want my seagulls on the stage, guys. Squawk, 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 squawk. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds that just was, like uh, the general. That was remarkable. <laughs> Thank you. They're still in the, back in, in, in the wings, her eyes just sort of glowing green. Oh. No. Well, surely there was... What? Uh, uh, surely there is something I can do to convince you all to come back. That was incredible. Come back to perform? Maybe, or to just watch the show. It would be on me. 
Sure. Unlike your clothing. <laughs> there is a new production I... we have about a very noble knight. We will have him clad in armor with the most beautiful decorated cape and then saves this noble lady who is dressed all oh, in all the best ways. They are going to be, it is going to be quite a show. The mm. attire like you have never seen oh. before. Would would one of you like a little uh, sneak peek? What's the price of this sneak peek? Eh, I think you've earned it. And you, uh, Melvin, you kind of feel an arm kind of come around your arm. Who? Uh, so, well, basically, one of these half-elven women kind of takes your arm and kind of leans up against you as she's sort of linked you arm in arm and she kind of leans her head against your shoulder and you um, smell this kind of like beautiful lavender scent kind of coming up from her hair, you know, behind this mask. And she says, hello again, handsome. Melvin is very uncomfortable <laughs> and For very reasons, clearly uncomfortable. She can't fully explain. Sarayan feels rage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, sorry, just quickly, just quickly, because I, I know Elena's mum wants to go to bed. But uh, massive thank you for $10. She goes, I've got no idea what's going on, but a random healing potion can never hurt. Thank you very much, oh, Elena's mum. That's Elena's nice. Mom. Thanks, much mom. appreciated. Yeah. Um, that will go in the pack of... Oh. Mariah or Talise. You guys pick. You can go ahead and take it. I was gonna Woo guess probably the uh, my you've both got healing. Yeah. What, what kind of healing potion? <clears throat> oh, good point. That's what I have to roll, not just a greater, obviously. Hush. Um with two natural twenties, <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be in it. Yeah. yeah. It's a regular. It's a regular. 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 So um, It is certainly the least that you could do to show us what marvelous costumes you have at your disposal. And the little one that's uh, leaning on to Melvin says, only if I can show this one the upper. Uh, I want to show him the uh, the box seats. I uh, we... We don't split the party. Back? Sure. <laughs> I've rolled a 14. Okay. Um... Uh, she looks, she's kind of looking at you. She has a little bit of mischief in her eyes, but it's like mischief that doesn't, it, it doesn't make you uncomfortable in the life-threatening kind of way, just the regular kind okay. of way. She's okay. totally a vampire. <laughs> They're all vampires. I've been Clearly. taken in like this before, Melvin, be careful. <laughs> and a couple of these other performers now come around and the, uh, they Uh, Are any of them attractive? Come up to you. Um, oh! Actually, the one... Um, and male. You see the one, the jester, with the black and white sort of cross thing kind of looks around to all of you, and he kind of walks up and then takes a stance where it's like, looks like he's not posing, but just the way that he holds himself on the stage, and as he kind of relaxes, you can see there is just a raw athleticism. Um, Saran. Saran's favorite words. <laughs> Raw athleticism. <laughs> wow. Saran uh, walks up to him, looks meaningfully at Melvin just long enough to hopefully for them to make eye contact, and then looks away quickly and goes and stands right next to the guy and like forces her arm through his. Yeah. It, if she makes says, eye contact, Melvin just kind of looks, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Look, I got one too. Exactly. And then he says to you, Saran, Ah, my beauty, would you like to see the upper seats? The view from above is most spectacular. We don't split the party. <laughs> Only for a moment. Promise. Raya, can I go to the upper seats? He says the view's really good and I love architecture. And he said it'd only be a moment. Sure, just for a second. Not? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just gives and he, consent. He takes your hand and kisses it and then puts it again, takes you arm in arm and starts to walk you sort of to the side to a little spiral staircase that starts to wind its way up to the box seats. 
and he begins pointing out little bits of architecture and you can see the chandeliers. You can now see these sort of paper lanterns that are also hanging behind the chandeliers everywhere, giving off this beautiful, diffuse, golden hour sort of light um, around everywhere. It's it's really kind of magical. Um, I need to know, Melvin, do you go as well? Um, Melvin is not very strong and not very willful, so if he's being dragged somewhere, he's probably going along. Not being dragged, but she's insistent, and she is Then he'll go along with it. Being flirty. Okay, so you yeah. wind your way up. Um, he's too so awkward we'll pause to on those turn two. someone down. You Mistake. are taken... <laughs> um, A plus. You course. do hear this um, uh, uh, or, sorry, the um, lead actor, this actress, the uh, company lead here, indicates to some of the others to take you back and show you the um, costume room as the other two come up. And indeed, sitting on a mannequin, there is this gorgeous cape set upon what looks to be a fake set of plate armor. It makes whatever night this... Um, show is going to be about look like a complete noble lord in battle attire. Um, it looks absolutely exquisite. There is also um, a sort of um, black feathery gown um, that s seems to be set to a smaller framed um, elven woman. Um, that seems to be just about finished. And then also um, what seems to be some type of robes, maybe for a more elderly person, it looks like they're stooped over, but they're also thin, smaller, more elven form um, that look to be scholar's robes that are um, absolutely exquisitely detailed. Um, the richest of the rich and an archmage maybe uh, would wear this type of attire. Um, so those are the things that are set among some others in the costume room. Um, so, um, as you guys are taken up into the top uh, box seats, Melvin and Sarayan, um, they're kind of, you know, being a little bit uh, flirtatious as they are. Uh, both of them are um, beautiful, very attractive, um, though you can't see beyond the mask, but uh, they smell smell really nice despite the fact they've just gotten done with the performance and uh, at one point Melvin one of them that's kind amazing. of um, looks over at you and you see uh, that one of these lights that's hanging from the ceiling you kind of see it um, twitch one of these paper lanterns kind of moves just a little bit so Ray and you see something kind of similar and as you squint to kind of look at it um the, you hear this uh, woman say, oh, no, 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 me in love, and kind of turns and she's right in your face and kind of plants a little peck of a kiss on your lips, which kind of start to grow very cold. And you suddenly feel almost like this Novocaine effect coming over your lips. Sarayan, something similar happens as you feel um, uh, this this strong athletic hand just kind of trace its way along your jawline and turn your chin um, and suddenly much closer than you expected you feel just a light kiss on your lips and then they grow cold and almost numb and you almost feel like your tongue swelling up in your own lips I need both of you to make constitution saving throws at this, Is this I'm how just a works? ghoul <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely Saran's first kiss she didn't think it was going to be like this Oh, Is that's... my throat supposed to close up? That's terrible. <laughs> I think I'm oh. allergic to whatever that you're wearing. Oh, so we look... <laughs> oh, Lord. Did you eat A liver kiss again. <laughs> <laughs> Did you eat peanuts before this? I have a 16. <laughs> that's really uh, funny. Let me check. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh beans! <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a cute ten. Are we oh. are we up in the same box, or nope. is this like we're on opposite sides of the theater? All right, kind guys, of thing? we'll show you Private where you boxes. are. Okay. Oh lord. 
Z, mm. Z had a good point oh, yeah. of whether I'm within 10 feet of Saran to get mm. the aura. Nope. Definitely <laughs> not. Cool. Um, yeah, so cool. On, cool. If you can see cool. Melvin, cool, cool, cool. you are cool, cool, over cool, cool, cool. here. Okay. And Saran, you are over here. Melvin, you see again these lanterns that are kind of hanging, paper lantern-like things begin to twitch. And you then look as um, this woman kind of leans forward and her mask begins to jitter and kind of falls to the ground. And her eyes are there looking wide, black, pupilless. And then another one opens on her forehead. Another eye opens all over her face. Multiple eyes begin to open and her smiling face begins to transform as two long fangs come out as they shape themselves into <laughs> pincers. And suddenly, you David's the one hand nightmare. that was caressing you, you feel two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hands now upon you. Thanks, as I really hate it. slowly <laughs> begins to shift into this arachnid form next yep. to you. I did it for worst nightmares. <laughs> Duran, the no. same thing happens to you, but unfortunately, as it's happening, you feel um, amazing. Well, you feel your body tense up, and as a as at a ten, um, oh, well. you are poisoned and no. paralyzed. As this, you feel yourself being turned Does she get over. Around? And over, no. and yeah, over. Actually, What's oh my that? god, I'm being wrapped up. Does she get her own aura? It should already be calculated into her sheet. Oh, okay. I've been yeah, caught in the you... web of lies. <sighs> so, so I take it their, their new show lies. that they're prepping is Kiss of the Spider Woman, then. <laughs> kiss. And Kiss of the Spider Man. And <laughs> Melvin. Turn off the dark. I'm wondering at this point, do you yell for help? Uh, yeah, yeah, I will. Okay, Definitely. Cool. When I see her transform, I'm going to start and screaming at the top of my lungs. Nether casts, you, um... Um, <laughs> nether casts a spell. All right. And we will uh, then roll initiative. As you see a much larger spider looking similarly start to kind of climb down these lanterns, hovering about 50 feet, uh, no, about 40 feet off of the ground um, in this main area. And we will hit the um, initiative order as these so acrobats turn into spiders. So for those of us who are spiders. not in the theater, uh, where should back, we put ourselves? You, you are essentially the back of the stage as we start this um, combat. So you've gone back, gotcha. just not the lip, but anywhere around here is okay. um, kind of good. Um, DM, there... Is this within 10 minutes of our performance on stage? Yes. Okay, so fly is still up in that case. Oh, cool. Just so you're aware. That's lucky. How appropriate. So ability. Fly with the spider. Thank <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> uh, Ooh, Anaris. So sorry. We'll see you in about 20 minutes. God. I was like, so combat gets... The end of combat is... The 18th. So I'm seeing seven. I've come. Um, who are we waiting on? Me, because I'm not connected to Roll20 on this laptop, because I'm waiting for mine to come back from the Apple Store. Um, but oh, I rolled okay. a four. Which makes sense, okay. being that I'm paralyzed and poisoned. Well, you're on your way to paralysis. It's not going to, uh, we're not going to start out combat with you completely unable to do anything, but um, you're getting there. What was your role you said? A cute little four. Cute little four. All right. <laughs> Love it. Um, cool. First up is a, um, a really big spider who seeing um, uh, Saran 
begin to um, tense up. Feels pretty confident about itself, so it's going to um, skitter along the ceiling, along the ropes and chandeliers and stuff towards Melvin. And it is going to um, send out a um, clump of web in your direction, Melvin. Is attacking with a uh, 20 to hit. Yeah. Um, I'm, I will cast shield. Okay. So then this web just kind of bursts all around you, having no effect. Um, and the spider continues to skitter closer to you. As my uh, arcane book appears in front of me to block the attack. Cool. All right. I need some. Let's do this. I don't know why that was in my battle music list. Um, and. On initiative count 20, you hear the spiders, the large spiders' uh, mandibles kind of click together and a voice sort of emanates, and you hear the words, Lights up! And all along the um, front of the stage, the footlights flare five feet high in a blazing wall of fire. That is on the layer action. And now it is Nether's turn. Nether is going to cast, uh, she's going to use um, Legacy of Stygia and cast Armor of Agathis upon herself, giving herself 10 temp HP and coating herself in a, a sheen of frozen frost. Um, and then she's gonna run over here um and she's gonna have doll that is a curtain that is in front of you so that's basically a wall right there so that's a uh, is the, is it a curtain or is it a wall it's a heavy curtain with no breaks in it but could i lift the curtain up and go under it if you go prone yes okay it's heavy uh, a heavy heavy like felt uh it's uh, uh what is it called? Velvet curtain. There we Velvet go. Velvet <laughs> curtain. Yeah. Um, she looks at it and she looks over at Prion and she uh, tries to lift it so that other people can get past her. Okay. Yeah. You can, if you're standing there with it like that, yes, you can lift it and uh, someone could duck under that way. Yes. All right. That's her done. Cool. Moriah. Um, doll does fly out, however, invisibly flying in the air. Okay. Um, can we see through the fire or is it, um, does it block line of sight? It's, it blocks, but, um, no one else is, so this creature is on the ceiling. These are mm -hmm. about 30 feet up here. Okay. And, um, uh, this, the creature itself is about 40 feet up. I'll come up to here. Um... I'm gonna use um what's the distance on that one so sixty feet. Right, too far. Um I'm going to cast dissonant whispers on the small boy attacking Melvin. I need a wisdom saving throw. Okay. I think I wisdom think that was a girl. But okay. <laughs> I have a nineteen. Uh, six points of psychic damage. Okay. Um, and no further effects. Any other movement, Mariah? Nope. That's Melvin. Scary stuff is happening around you. Yeah, I, I noticed that, unfortunately. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, push away from the spider and out into the air. Utilizing flight to okay. move to there, I believe. So you are not leaving its range? No, I'm going to go okay. around it. Understood. Um, cool. And then I will uh, take a might take my quill and drop a small bead of ink, and it's going to fly forward, glowing red, as I cast fireball over Yay! here to catch both of them. Oh, interesting. Um, you could be a fireball. 
My little one has a 22 now. to save, and my big one has an 8. Okay. It's so a DC 12. 15, so uh, 25 fire damage to the failed save. Uh, doesn't like it. Good. It shouldn't. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and there sounded like a rhinoceros. It's uh, interesting. So fire. So actually, you see a few of these paper lantern type of things begin to burn up. You swear you can see bones dropping out of them now, too. And some of this webbing that had been invisible along the ceiling that it was clinging to burns up and the spider drops down to the floor level, taking some damage. Quel damage. Ten damage. Someone had to say it. All right. However, it is now not visible beyond the um, flames for the rest of you. Cool. All right. We are on to... Who are we on to? Prion! Me already. Uh, okay, I... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25... 30 to there, going underneath Nether. Uh, uh, um, is the other one, uh, so 35 feet for me, yeah? Yep. Eolak goes in on the one up near Melvin. And I, I just throw a javelin. All right. Just toss just, that javelin. It's going to be at just normal. That's obviously mm -hmm. it's five foot. Yep. And if it over thirty foot, it's just disadvantage. Seventeen to hit. That hits. Six damage. Cool. Pierces into this spider creature. Cool. And movement done. Any bonus action? Um. No. All right, Inaris. Awesome. You could move out of the way. Fuck. You me, I can't. I've oh, you use all your movement. There, never mind. Oh, Inaris is going to. So this curtain does that provide me any kind of cover or anything? Uh, yeah. If you stand behind this, it is total cover. Um. So twenty feet. I want to go. Yeah, ish. And I would like to... Feels very hot when you are within five feet of this sort of firewall right here. Okay, JK, I want to go there. Um, it's closer than I thought that was. Okay. And I want to attack this little bad boy here. My long bow. Short bow, sorry. Okay, um, so it is... The curtain then is directly between you and the creature, I believe it. Yeah. What if she stood right behind Nether? Then, uh, well, you're holding up the curtain to this Can't level. It is further dash. up. So she could do that and get through. Bonus action dash um, and then get through and then shoot. Either that, uh, uh, which one should I do, Peter, since I've already moved partially? I don't want to just like... That's fine. Randomly. Um, you could, I, I would go through probably to here or something. Then you'd have a clear shot at both of them. I'm assuming you've Bonus got that. action dash as a rogue. rogue are you? You're level three rogue, aren't you? Uh, I'm all... Yeah, I'm Four rogue. Yeah. Yeah, you have cunning action, so you can get to here. Hold on one second. And two. That is a 24 to hit. Which one are you hitting? This one right here, if he's pinging. There he goes. Okay, yep. Hits. Zanaris does not like spiders. 
Imagine that. Oh, why not? <laughs> I wonder why. Do I get sneak attack damage? Mm -hmm. You do. Yes. That is 13 points of damage. Well struck. The arrow lands true and this black Icarus blood starts to bleed from it. Anything else from you? Uh, I can have my bonus action. Bonus action dashed. Dash back. Haven't you already dashed? She has, so. Yeah. Um, Dash or told. You probably have about, uh, I haven't counted, but it's probably close to about 10 feet of movement left, so. Um, Roll 20 hates me. So I could move back up here then if I wanted to. No. No, nope, I'm you, <laughs> you can't get back through. Okay. And I use my bonus action to dash, so I think that's it. That's all I can okay. do. Spiders. One attacks Melvin as a at a nineteen. Field again. Since okay. it's dropped since the last Barrier time. of energy comes up and the one attacks Serain. Um with a uh, oof, 21. Okay. So it is three points of piercing damage and then this cold feeling begins to flush through your body. I do need you to make another constitution saving throw. Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. The um, you still feel cold, but the full effect of the um, poison does not set it. And you do take eight points of poison damage, though. Awesome. <laughs> and all right. Um, that is them. It's now Serian's turn. Nifty. So Serian will uh, dip into her deep wealth of spiritual um, connectivity, i.e. her lay on hands pool, <laughs> and use um, five points to uh, try to counteract this poison. Okay. And so just a point of clarification for me, um, uh -huh. it says that I can dip into the pool um, and then use five HP to either cure a disease or neutralize a poison affecting the creature. Does that mean that I also get those five hit points mm. added back? Or it's no? It's either or. And okay. currently you are actually not poisoned. It was more of a flavor thing, so. Um, oh, well, bees. <laughs> yeah, you could be poisoned if you want to be. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Always um, leave that as an option. In that case, I will heal five points. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. Using that as your action. All right. Anything else? Um. Other than to cower in fear, no. <laughs> okay, Talise. Ah, uh, okay. I would like to move as close to center as I can get. I think that was my. Alrighty. And then I would like to cast Create Water so that there's water raining down, which would extinguish the flame at the edge of the of the stage. Cool. How what's could, is it a five foot square? No. I can just cast it as water falling as rain within range. It's hmm. a thirty foot. 30 foot cube. Oh, wow. Okay. Within so range and it has the 30 foot range. So it should knock out at least the side near Sarayan because that's what I'm trying to get to. Because. Okay. So, like, you're looking to extinguish kind of this area right here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, a, a goodly see. chunk of that. <laughs> Extinguishing exposed flames. That's very cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, extinguishes that like entire 
bit right there. Nicely done. Yeah. Thank you. And then for my bonus action, I would like to cast Spirit Weapon. Spiritual Weapon. Where are you placing that Spiritual Weapon? I'm going to place my very, very cool Spiritual Weapon. Wow, rulers on the map. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, those aren't mine. Um, oh, I forgot the range. I was just looking at it and I forgot the range. Don't tell Z. <laughs> I think it's 60 feet. So I was 60 nice. feet, 60 feet. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, exactly. So I was going to send it over to Saran. That was my cool. idea. What does your spiritual weapon look like again? My spiritual weapon is, and I'm so excited because this is the first time I've used it. So it is a captain's cutlass plus a plus one captain's cutlass, which is a plus one scimitar. And it has like these like moving engravings along the length of the blade so that it looks like stormy seas and there's a giant ship on it. And then it also has um, lightning around it, but it doesn't do lightning damage <laughs> for flavor. It's cool. Cause it's, it's Valkyr's favorite weapon, so it's got to have lightning on it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. This is a better color. All right, cool. Make Go ahead and make that spell attack. So it's a D8 plus six. So it rolls Gotta roll to hit first. Roll to hit. Oh, sugar tit. Oh. <laughs> Nobody heard what? that. What? We all heard it. <laughs> Nobody heard that. Isn't that usually like, I, I mean, not it. a great one, but like a a term of like endearment? Oh, and then it rolled the it's like Not when Teresa swear. says it. Not when Teresa says <laughs> it. It's not, it's not uh, a term tits. of endearment. It's, no, it's n it's just one. And it's not a term of endearment. It's uh, lengthening a cuss Singular word. sugar tint. It's Un the name of her swear. Unfortunately, 10 is not going to do it with the attack. The cut list whoosh, goes wide across the top. Doesn't hit. Sorry, Talise. Fine. Fine. Hmm. Then, yeah. <laughs> That's the end. Is it just... All right. Spiders goes already. You've missed. You've missed me, haven't you? No. Nope. Oh. That's one. That's This is the top oh, of the next round. two spiders. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. These spider the climbs... <laughs> about Confused. halfway up the side here looks towards Moriah yeah and come at me spidey bitch <laughs> spidey bitch, uh, it spidey will bitch. <laughs> it will uh, shoot a web towards you at a 22 to hit yeah <laughs> you are restrained okay um this is my and surprised face. it will begin to continue climbing and we'll get let's see what just double check what my speed is um it will get up oh, it will get all the way 40 feet to the ceiling and then we'll reel you in that fast, that Jesus. Action. It, y it yanks you, and you can now feel yourself starting to look very similar to these floating paper lanterns that are kind of hanging <laughs> from the ceiling here. So it reels I'm having, in. like, serious flashbacks to Wednesday night. Why do I get reeled in in multiple <laughs> and looks combats in one week? <laughs> this is a bullshit. It's, uh, I don't know. It's <laughs> September? <laughs> and, uh... Let's see. Oh, oh I really wish I had to used all it's my October spells fest. and RP. It happens. Oh, well. Got a natural it two does. and a natural one to bite you after reeling you in. Natural one and natural two. That is so sad. Damn. All right. Uh, cool. That is the end of Big Spider's turn. It is uh, Nether, I believe. No? Um, all right. Nether is going to come out from underneath the curtain and she's going to stand here. She's going to send Doll invisibly to try and cut the <laughs> the strands of um, the um, uh, 
strands of the webbing. This little tiny sword. Please don't make me take falling damage. <laughs> There's no way he's getting through it. <laughs> um, so that All is right. her. Um, that is her bonus action. Her okay. Action action is to launch two Eldritch blasts at the large one. Uh, I have a seventeen, and so that's seventeen rolled, which um, add four, seven to that, so that's twenty-four. And the other one is a thirteen, so add seven to that, that's a twenty. Uh, yeah, that hits. So the two bolts combined do a total of eleven points of force damage. Gotcha. To the and, big one uh, you said, yeah. Yeah. Dalt boom tries to start cutting through the uh, the strands. Okay, Dahl can make an attack. <laughs> All right, Dahl has rolled a nineteen plus four. That hits, and he does one point of damage. Okay, noted. That does that. A few strands begin to fray. Oh. Uh, very good. Uh, That's never done. Mariah, and uh, sorry, uh, Inaris, you can drag your token back onto where it was and it should be updated. So. Mariah, you are um, becoming quickly cocooned. Whee! Um, I could use a reminder. Who is still under the influence of spidey toxins of our two Both of your friends? team members shook it off. They both shook it off. Amazing. Yeah. Um, you're probably right. Then, I'm gonna uh, kind of do a little wave at the big encroaching spidey face, um, and then I'm gonna miss you step. Okay. Out. Uh, I should have remembered that. Um, where are you gonna go? That's a great question. I can't quite get to those stairs. Um, should probably misty step closer to the party. That seems prudent. Uh, Let's see about the the stairs. Or how how high up high is up. the creature? Yeah, feet how high, high up is? Yeah, how how high up am I? It's four, at this point, it's forty feet up. Forty feet up. Um, then I basically drop to the floor, thirty feet down, and I'll take ten feet of falling. Okay. I'll I'll put myself here for ease of just separating Noted. myself from the from the dude. That will be a uh, one damage. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. And okay. Any action? Yeah. Um. God, why do my spells require shit like that? Um. Yeah, why not though? Um. Can I force this one? Um. I will cast dissonant whispers on the small one again. Uh. Okay. No, I can't because it's a leveled spell. Listen, yeah, you could vicious mock it. I will instead vicious mockery it. All right, wisdom save. I've got thirteen fails, five disadvantage on its next attack. Got it. Yep. Cool. Um, I forgot to do my thing, so I'm going to do it right now. And this would have been the same. Nether. Let's see. Did you move out on your turn? Yes. To here? Okay. So in that case, just Prion and... Well, shoot. This doesn't work very well, but... Um, it's supposed to work better than this. <laughs> uh, everyone in a line, a 60-foot line... Here. That's five feet wide. Um, please make a dexterity saving throw. This um, 
layer action is entitled da 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 as a couple of the strands of webbing break loose and a large chandelier comes swinging down across the stage in a 60 foot line cascading nice. downward uh, threatening He's to singing to bring down the chandelier <laughs> <laughs> So the three of you, Inaris, Prion, and um, Talise, please make a dexterity saving throw. Where's it coming from? Oh, no. Sorry. Well, Nether, you would have been there. This That's why I said it on initiative count 20. But Does it go you through it the... Uh, dex? Through the cut? It does. It crashes through it and is obliterated right after you having to dodge it. Well, I'll take that. Owie. Nice. Yeah, that's a six. Six. Um, Prion, take five damage. The rest of you take ten points of bludgeoning damage. Owie. <clears throat> All right. And now it is Melvin's turn. Um, I'm going to fly out of range of the spider. And okay. The attack of opportunity. Disadvantage attack. I have a nine. All right, doesn't hit. Perfect. Um, I'm going to go around the big spider. Mm -hmm. Um, over to here, I guess. Uh, yeah, over to there. Oh, I have sixty feet. I have another ten feet. Cool. Um, over to there. Uh, and then I will cast uh, second level Tasha's Mind Whip as I throw out an inky tendril at this small um, spider over here. Okay. I need an intelligence saving throw. coming to save throw. you. Coming to save Sarayan. It's failed with a four. <laughs> oh. All right. That's uh, 12 points of psychic damage and... Um, it can't take a reaction until its next turn, and on its next turn, it can choose a move, an action, or bonus action, but only gets one of the three. Noted. Cool. All right. Um, we are on to Mr. Prion. Uh, there's not much I can do. Um, five, ten. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 25, 30. I will. I'm just going to double move and stand over Mariah. Okay. Quite already. The little spiders Bye. go. Did someone say something? No? I just That's said hi to Prion. <laughs> One attacks. Ooh. Wow. Um. Let's see. One. Oh, I can't. It'll skitter down towards Priyan and attack. I have a 23 to hit. You got a bit closer. I, I attack him before he gets close to me. Okay. Da, da, da. 18 to hit. Hits. Got 10 damage and he stucks where he is. Oh, nice. Actually, does he? A sen that's only in Sentinel. Which Sentinel is, does. Yeah. Sentinel stops him. Not um, not Polar Mastery. Yeah, so he can continue. Polar Mastery. Yeah. Okay. All right. 23 to hit. Uh, yeah, that hits. Okay. Um, so, uh, 12 points of piercing damage. Please make a constitution saving throw. 24. 11 points of poison damage. Oh, dear. <clears throat> You're not paralyzed. All right, Sarayan is going to choose to attack you. Instead of doing nothing. Oh. oh. <laughs> Nine to hit. That does not hit. Well, <laughs> For you. you. Have, yes. You can have a response. Oh, my God. So fun. So, uh, Sarayan's response will be to look at the creature and say you should never kiss someone without their consent no <laughs> and way. then she is going to 
use wave to attack that MF. All right, right go for it. Swipe Yo. left. <laughs> uh, let's see. I said that right, right? I've never actually yeah, swiped. Yeah, you did. You... Okay, got it. Good job. All right, so I will roll to a take. It's past my time. 17. Uh, doobly doobly boo. Uh, I have a question. So, yeah. since I am not able to use the roll 20 interface, I'm having to math. So, That's also, right. okay, so what I see on my sheet is wave range hit DC plus nine. Do I add that plus nine? That's what I rolled. I'll choose 20, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so then I rolled a 26. Uh, With wave. Yeah, that hits. Dope. And now I get to... Is the top one um, one-handed or two-handed? That'll be the one-handed. One-handed? One okay. yeah. yeah. So I definitely do one-handed. So 1d6 plus 8. I'm just going to use the cute little thing. Cute little kraken. Six. <laughs> uh, boop, boop, boop. Roll. Me. 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 Nine. Nine damage. Gotcha. Um, and also, because it was a hit, can I do Divine Smite? You absolutely can. Because you don't kiss people without their consent. And so I definitely am going to smite that B with the power of Persana. All right. What level Let's smite? Let's see. Um, and that's dependent on my spell slots that are open, correct? Uh, yeah. So if you okay. cast it with a higher spell slot, it... Um, does more damage. Cool. So D eight. I have up to fourth level spell slots, but I don't have the little check boxes above the. You, you have fourth level. Fourth level. Yeah, for dominate beast, just with wave. Oh. Oh, that isn't. Yeah, you can't okay, use that. Okay, so second one. level. A, so it'll be yeah. second level. <laughs> okay, gotcha. So okay. that's 3d8, right? Am I like, doing that correctly? Yes. This has got a higher level character again. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Liz. <laughs> what level oh, you now, Liz? 15? No, be cool, be She's cool. She's going to save us all. <laughs> okay, well, it's not that impressive, but eight, so. Extra 17. eight damage. Hey, every, every tick matters. So there you go. Okay, and since I've taken the attack, I get to attack again. You do like that phrase, Peter. Take that one back. What? I know. Who's got every tick, tick? Every tick matters. I don't, every tick matters. Not a fan of that turn of phrase. Oh, sorry. I just. Uh... Nasty. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I, so I 19 to hit. Um. Uh, For my second yeah, yeah, that hits. Okay. And then all oh, one d six plus acht. Uh, 10 That's... points of damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 damage, okay. And then, can I smite them again? <laughs> you can. You can lay it all on the line here. Perfect. This time I'm going to do Searing Smite at level that 1. That you have to use a bonus action to do before. The, those ones are bonus well, action spells that you use before you attack. Beans. You can always use Divine Smite when you hit, though. Okay, well, I will use Divine Smite. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Second level now, again or first? Let's let's do second. All right. Three D eight. Okay. Thank you for talking me through this. Anytime. Boop. Seventeen. Seventeen. E. It is continuing to sort of. It's like uh, you remember Frodo with uh, Sh Shelob and everything <laughs> yes. is kind of like mm -hmm. uh, pushing back the uh, uh, pincers and then you take oh, that's, that's wave Sam. And just, as it comes back. Oh, you're right. Samwise the Sam. brave. Yeah. As, Dude, you're right. Frodo's all catatonic. Dude. Point, so. 
Frodo I know. Just a shot. I These know. things happen. Thinking I about knew. a lot, trying to think of a million things, and you plunge wave into just its like carapace. Sam. Sam had a lot on his plate, and so does Peter. <laughs> oh, and you killed this one. First <gasps> day. Hail Samwise the Strong. Kissing people without asking. Oh, Remember that. Very folks. good. Anything else, Sarayan? Um, she'll just stand there, uh, looking self-satisfied. Okay. And uh, shaking wave. Nito. Okay, Talise. Well, okay. <laughs> I would like to cast Sacred Flame, please. On uh, I would like to move and then cast Sacred Flame. These are the words okay. that I am choosing to say. You cannot. The big one is up on the up. You can see the other one is blocked by the fire, so you can only see the big one. Darn. Yeah, I would like to. <laughs> I would like to cast on the giant thing. Okay, uh, let's see, Dex say, I've got an eight. Aha! Uh -huh. Nine, Nine points, points of radiant damage to yes. big spider. Cool. Big mama. And then can we move my, can we move I my cutlass 20 feet to the right? Great. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Big spider turn. Mm hmm. All right. Who am I most irritated by right now? Uh, just quickly, as it's the quick beginning around, which I was waiting for, I was going to say people are donating bits, but a crack and hype train started, so we're already nearly at level three. So, oh my gosh, thank you guys for the support. That's amazing. Very nearly at level three. So, guys, we'll just I'll wait until the, the hype train's finished, and then I'll say thank you to well, well David will go through and we'll, we'll divvy oh, it all I, up and say thank. I you. guess I'll start writing that down. I can we do it, will... David. I know you usually do it. So. I do normally do it. Yeah. Take those I don't have paying attention. Go across the ceiling here and roll a webby attack against Mr. Melvin. Uh, I have a 18 I don't like that. plus Man. something. I'm sorry. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, uh, where's my stat block? A to 25. Yeah, the shield won't save me from that one. So I'll tank I'll take it. Alright, web attack, and then it will actually just close this as uh 15, 20, 30. We'll just actually close the distance on you to come and try to bite you. You are restrained at the moment. I can how that, close the How distance. does that interact with fly? Um, I think restrained is just you, I have no. Do you have speed, a hover right? speed? Yeah. No. Doesn't fly? I have a fly speed. I've I forgot how this works. I've been in this scenario before. Um, it just says I have a fly speed, not a not a hover speed. So yeah. I assume that I'm not able to stay aloft and just start to descend slowly. Yeah, there or are some spells fall. that specify that you descend slowly if the spell ends. Like the spell isn't if, over, if, you're, if your spell is, is reduced being... if your spell is reduced to zero and you can't benefit no from anything way. you uh you do Alright fall. Um, then okay. you yeah. drop. <laughs> Still have concentration on it, so if I become unrestrained, presumably I can start flying again. Yeah, but, but yeah. you would uh, drop and take, we say, was it 40 feet? Or were Does you he hit the floor with the, uh, with the attachment to the spider? That's a good question. What's that? Does he hit the um, floor it, with the attachment to the spider? It basically sends it out and you, your speed becomes zero, so you would, you would drop. Right, but it was only 35 feet away from me. So if I'm still let, tethered to the spider, I shouldn't yeah. hit the ground. Um. Logic. Logic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a fit, huh? The seats go like that, don't they? All right. All right. Yep. And then it'll reel you back up as his <laughs> bonus action, and then it will make its attack. The attack. Okay. 
Uh, I mean, you could always pull Gwen Stacy and still make me take falling damage from it. Like, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> man. No, it's Pretty elastic. Soon. It, you, you bungee down and then right back up into its jaws and I have a natural 19 um, plus Ooh. some stuff. You do take the falling okay. damage from the fall. Um, <laughs> then Suck. I yeah. will so, cast shield with my last first level spell. Well, I have natural, natural 19, 19, sorry. So it's a total of a... Um, oh, I, okay. I, yeah, well. rolled uh, 26 then. Yeah, my, my shield will For, not help um, some damage, so I'm not going to roll with dice. Ooh. Um, 20, or no, uh, 18 points of piercing damage. And I need a con save. Uh-oh, here come the poison. Okay, uh, con it's save. Okay. Ooh. I've got a dirty nice. 20. Getting lucky with you those. You take seven points of poison damage. So grand total of a lot. 20... 25. 5? 25. Uh, so my DC for my concentration check is going to be half of that is more than 10. So 12, right? 12. Um, I have a 15. Great. You're still technically flying. Barely. <laughs> and then, um, uh, this should count 20. We will use uh, the layer action, glue them to the seats, and webs between all of the seats will kind of spring into view. And anyone on the ground, oops, level there uh, is now basically subject to the web spell when down here. Nether. Cool when on graphics. the ground red floor. Yeah. Um, Nether will... Uh... I think I made Serain invisible. Oh, no, I didn't. Never mind. I was on the wrong So, player. first cool. of all, um, Dahl will turn invisible again and fly the hell away from where he was. Um, then she will... Uh, Attack the closest uh, speeder with two Eldritch Blasts. I have double 14s plus seven. I believe those will both hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So a total of 11 points of force damage. That is nether done. Um, unless, this can she... Pretty rough. I don't know that um, her sprite can turn invisible and attack on the same round. I think that is... I, yep. I believe it's an action to turn invisible, yep. isn't it? Yep. It is. Yep. Cool. Nope. All right, Mariah, please make a deck save at the start of your turn. Dex save. 17. You are not restrained by thick, sticky webbing, but it is difficult terrain. Okay. Um... And it lightly obscures the area as well. The dude is right next to Prion right now, yeah. Okay. Um, I will cast Dissonant Whispers on the small spider. Okay. The close one you said, sorry? Yeah. I don't know if it affects you or what you're going to do, but I can't take an attack of opportunity. No. Well, I'll do it anyway. I have a 12 on the save. That is a failure, so 13 points of psychic damage, it must immediately move as far away from me as it can get in its movement. Instead of doing that, it's just gonna shrivel up and die. Amazing. <laughs> uh, I will can just In fact, it also reverts back bit. into its original form, too. Uh, I'm gonna shout up at Melvin. Hey, kid, you've got this, all right? Kick its butt! Have a bardic inspiration back. That's my turn. Cool. Melvin, you feel slightly encouraged. While well being eaten. Yeah. 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 I've... <laughs> 
X Force. Oh. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. It's my turn, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm still restrained? You Sorry. are. Great. Um, Z pointed out to me that in the player's handbook, under flying movement, it does say, if a creature that is flying has its re speed reduced to zero, it falls unless it has the ability to hover or is being held aloft right. by magic, such as the fly spell. That's what I was thinking. So we did it right either way. Yeah. Um, yeah. We didn't. But it's such a weird place to put that little uh, yeah. caveat. Um, You'd think so. they'd just put it in the spell itself and be done with it. But Yeah, okay. Oh, well. Um, I'm still able to take actions, correct? While restrained? Hey, yeah. mm -hmm. um, am I able to do somatic components for spells? Yes. Cool. Um, in that case... I will um, in my panic I'm going to cast another fireball aiming behind the creature so that I do not catch myself in it okay so where are you centering this fireball <laughs> uh, it's going to be somewhere over here <clears throat> gotcha so that it catches it on the outside edge and hopefully doesn't hit anybody else. All right. Uh, let's roll. I've got a 10 plus that's my dex. 14 for the save. That fails. DC okay. 15. So 28 points of fire damage. <laughs> Ow. The webs are on the floor. Um, you guys are 40 feet up. Would you try to target the webs down there and get include those? Um, sure. Yeah, because I can hit both the ceiling and the floor with it if I put it in the middle. Okay. Might as well. And so now all of the webs near Prion and Mariah start to light on fire and spread around. So we've got burning webs around you. Yeah, maybe Breon, please make a choice. dex save. <laughs> Do I still need to if the webs are burnt? They are burning away in one round. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, I am going to use my D20 inspiration then. Oh my god, really? Did I need to? <laughs> Did you get Priya? Uh, <laughs> I got a, a natural 19 and a natural 20. Well Damn. done. Well done. Which was a 20. Hard to a argue with that. Yeah. All right. You are not restrained, but you are in burning web. Um, 5, 10. 15, like a really bad name for a western town. Uh, I moved to around here. Um... Is, is there anything that's holding this spider aloft, like a web, so it will drop? It's just walking on the ceiling, and the webs are still difficult terrain, just so you know. Um, that's a good question. Did I burn the webs that it was walking on, on the ceiling? It's just like walking on the ceiling. Time? Oh, okay. I could have gone gotcha. around Mariah, though, around the side of the fire. What okay. a feeling, dancing well, on the ceiling. If it's wall of it, fire, it only it's... hurts one way. Uh, it spell. is based on which I should have talked about with Mariah it's based on starting your turn within it or passing through it um, which I have forgotten is it doing heat both baby ways burn. how much damage do I take is it, is it um, like a wall of fire it, it's just no, fire no it's not oh, okay. it's just yeah. fire okay. it, it is but it's not um, it's not like it's not the spell um, s starting there you take um, it would be twelve points. Okay. So, so I uh, so I was here. So. Yep. And if you walk into it here, uh, you would you would have to you would take the same damage. Um, or yeah. Okay. So difficult terrain. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. So I'm around here then. Twenty-five, thirty. Um, yep. and I am gonna f 
fire to two javelins up at the creature. Okay. Because I keep forgetting I'm a fighter and I have two attacks. First one is with Eolak getting involved. Twenty one to hit. Yeah. Six damage. Okay. And then the next one. Twenty five to hit. You are the nine damage. You're rolling like a madman, sir. Shoop, shoop. Can't do anything else. Brings us to Serian. Your friends are still fighting. As you're just kind of seated up on this. Uh, Serian uh, sits down, opens a bag of popcorn, starts eating. <laughs> Serian. <laughs> um, she goes to the edge of the balcony and uh, uses this opportunity to cast uh, Dominate Beast on the spider that's fighting Melvin. Okay. Um, and I do that with Wave. Doesn't it have to be on fish? So what it says is that it, it I attempt to beguile a beast that you can see within range. I think range so. If you look at feet. Wave's item in general, it might be um... underneath Wave. Yeah. When you when you first read it out, it was fish. I think. Let me see. It has to be a beast that has an innate swimming speed. That's just okay. It's because it's part of a trident to fish command, so it doesn't say I... that. It, it's a little um, obscure. Yeah, I don't see that. Yeah, but I believe it's, you. Because it okay. just puts the spell on your list, even though it's sort of conditional from the item. Yeah. So yeah, not your well... fault. <laughs> well, the <this> beans <laughs> that changes my plan. All right, uh... what's your plan? Well, let's find out. Um, so, I mean, similarly, I am going to command the spider to get away from Melvin. Okay. At least I'm going to try to command the spider to get away from Melvin. What is my save? Wisdom? Wisdom 13. Uh oh, natural five. Oh. Uh, I fail. <gasps> Yay! Okay. So, uh, Sarayan is going to stand on the edge of the balcony and point with wave at the spider and say, Hey, you! Get away from him! <laughs> and starts kind of like jabbing the air <laughs> and like then indicating to just like go away from him. I like it. I like it. All right. Um, anything else? Um, yeah, so I will take some movement to get myself closer. So I went forward five feet. You would How have to movement? jump down. It's about 30 feet down. So Whew. is that the only way I can get down? Uh, you could run back and down the stairs. But yeah, that seems be longer smarter. than jumping off the edge. But I'm very heavy. <laughs> you are. The, the spiders there. They're like, they're like a trampoline. <laughs> oh no! I'm gonna do the safe thing and not <laughs> jump off the side in heavy armor. You just see okay. <laughs> jump off and just like going right through the floor. <laughs> the ah. Let's just say you can make it halfway down the stairs with your movement. Yeah. You don't wear your armor. Sounds though, good. You, you got a dress She's got on. her boots. Well, I've got That's my boots on full. and my bracers. All right, right. Priol's gonna go you naked and just going to wear braces and still get the full benefit <laughs> of full oh, plate armor. No. <laughs> That's cool. how that works. I forgot. It I'm is... sorry. I should have taken more damage. It's it's okay. I can knock uh, off 20 hit points right now and just make up for it. Uh, yes. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> to leave, like, don't, your turn. Don't offer that. I mean, I want to be fair. As one of the healers, don't offer that. Not we'll figure that, that out later. Okay. I just want to be honest, okay. you guys. It's appreciated. Um, I would like to first bonus action.
cast healing word on Melvin. Okay. Melvin! Melvin! Heal this, Melvin! There you Thank go. You. Have some have have some points. And then um where is it? I would like to cast shatter on um, kind of like I guess near the spider's butt. So okay. sort of it's similar like... spacing it looks like similar spacing to, to Melvin's fireball, so it's nearby but not catching friendlies. Uh, all right, my save. Roll the nine plus. Hmm. All right, I have uh, thirteen. I fail. <laughs> Fourteen thunder damage. Ouch. Uh, Peter, I think Anaris got pulled off of the turn counter. Oh my gosh, Anaris! I'm so sorry. FYI. You're good. A team. A. I thought she said 18. All right. No, 18. <laughs> 14 points. Maris had, a, Very cool. had a five on initiative. So right before. Um, All right. Talise. Thank you. Yep. And uh, that will be the end of uh, Talise's turn, unless you have a, what you use the bonus action, unless you have movement and we will go and do um, immediately do an Aris's turn. If it makes more sense, you can get me on the next round and just. Nah, put me nah, back nah, no, 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 no! It makes that we've already gone a little bit past, so it makes perfect sense to do it right now. Sweet. All the spiders are gone from where they're all at. Okay, let's see. There's one left feasting on Melvin. Ooh! All right, I'm coming, Melvin. I'm coming. I can. I think I can still hit him from where I'm at, actually. My short bow. I can still reach him from here, can I not? I love the throat singing in this track. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, 320 feet. Yeah, so while I'm still in yeah, cover. Yeah, you've got this. Longbow, absolutely. Ooh, yeah. Oh, god damn. <clears throat> it's a nine to hit. It totally hits, right? Sorry, Anaris. Nine is not quite going to do it. She, she goes to take a shot and, like, trips. Shit. Hmm. Just fascinating. All right. Hype train. Hype train. Ooh. Hype train. Hype train. So the spider drops Melvin. <laughs> that works. And... Con continues to hover. You, yeah, you just kind of sit there. And goes across the ceiling. We're going to do the hype train announcement. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, it finished, yeah? We're, it finished, we're almost... yeah. We completed a level yeah, three. The, Amazing. Uh, everything's in chat. That's super cool. Let's let's finish the combat, and then we can... Or do you think it's... Oh, you might want actually... to do it now. <laughs> it's been a lot longer oh, combat okay. goes for. No, no, no. You're, you're, you're getting there. It's getting do pretty you want close. To do it? Just seeing what I can... Um, Let's finish up and then we can uh, do the hype train talk okay. while we're getting ready for the giveaway. So, um, let's see. It has to move away by the quickest room possible. And then let's see. Let's look down at my targets here. Um, I have to get away from him. So I can attack him. Talise, you've been annoying. Let's uh, attack you with the web. <laughs> I have a ooh, <laughs> I have a 14 to hit. Nope. Okay. Shut up, Liz. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> and it's going to stay there. This is getting pretty. This is not good for her. So. Nether. Nether will shoot two uh, Eldritch Blasts at the spider. Oh, I've got one natural 20, but I rolled crap damage. So, well, let's all roll that one. Yeah, so um, the natural 20 is four points of damage. And then I had oh. hit AC 17. Yep, that's it. Another one point of damage. Five points of um, force damage. And uh, uh, Dahl is going to shoot with advantage from invisibility with his little short bow. Okay. <laughs> Uh, hits AC uh, 20 
does one point of damage. I'm assuming it's immune to poison. Um, is it? Damn it! Uh, it's not. It's not immune to poison. No. Well, then I need a Constitution saving throw from Mr. Spider, or Ms. Spider. Mr. Spider's rolled an eleven. Uh, that is a fail. Wow. Um, <laughs> and not only is it a fail, you failed by five points. Uh, wait, no, sorry, never mind. The, oh, the saving what throw, is the, the DC sa of The that? saving throw has to be uh, five or lower. So anyway, so you're just poisoned for one minute. Okay. If you, uh, you should know, if you ever roll a five or lower on the saving throw, then you not only are poisoned, but you fall unconscious. Nice. Cool. But, yeah. Mariah. Yo! I've got some music for you, oh, please, and please, please. it's you full want, of really, really tritones and minor seconds, and just very painful. Ooh, the devil chords, <laughs> quarter tones. Yep. Smush all right. it all together. I'm actually casting I've... this at third level. Was that um, a okay? But... A pickety third. Uh, so it'll be more damage than that. I just okay. I... I've rolled a two. So... Amazing. So indeed, I roll that extra d6. By two more d6. Two d6. Can you uh, break? So 19. That's way better. Psychic <laughs> damage. Way, way, way better. And with that, you hear a sort of strange sound as the pincers begin to click together and it jitters around and then falls and sort of bounces in the web. Um, you don't as know the, the meaning of avant-garde. <laughs> as the web yeah! starts to uh, burn up, um, Prion and Mariah take... Oh, I should move. <laughs> six points fire damage. Mariah, oh. as long as you don't end your turn next to it, you're okay, fine. Okay, thank you. And then um, you um, see this... Uh, um, misty form kind of whoosh, appear way back in the balcony here and oh, no. it calls out she calls out in an imperious tone stop this immediately and um the webs drop you see a couple spider legs retracting back into the alcoves and all goes quiet for a moment. And that is where we will end tonight's session. Thank you all.